This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Yeah! Well, let's get back to it. Yes, thank you, uh, Tim Daly, for that uh, comprehensive football update. Now I don't have to waste five minutes watching Match of the Day this evening. Heavy snow is to sweep across the UK yet again this weekend after temperatures plunged to as low as minus 15.2 degrees centigrade last night. And I would translate that to His Majesty's Fahrenheit by doubling it and add 32. But you can't double a minus number because then you get a double minus number and that doesn't exist. I've tried putting that in my calculator, and it just doesn't work. <coughs> Yellow weather warnings have been issued for large swathes of the country, and no sentence with good news ever contained the word swathes. Warning! Warning! Delays and cancellations could be expected as buses, trains and flights could be impacted, but as that sounds like a perfectly ordinary day in Great Britain, you probably won't notice the difference. Drivers have been urged to get, by hi- get behind the wheel only if necessary, And if you do, please make sure and undertake on roundabouts and hang on to the bumper of the car ahead because that will make them go faster and you might reach your destination seconds sooner than you otherwise would. Don't forget your time is valuable and nothing bad will ever happen to you as you are a a unique and a special person. A yellow snow and ice warning covers much of northern England and southern Scotland until 6am tomorrow. The Met Office released a statement. They said... They warned that snowfall could cause travel disruption in affected areas with delays on roads, stranding some vehicles and passengers. Buses, train services and flights may also be delayed or cancelled, while untreated pavements and cycle paths could lead to a risk of fall and injuries. There's a chance of power outages in some areas. Basically, it's just a little light winter weather, which any well-run country would barely notice, but that will bring devastation and chaos to this clown show. Not now. Not now. Not appropriate. Roy tweets. These are tweet teats and uh, tweet teats and tweets and texts and emails from last night. He said, "It's got even better at the BBC, Nick. Not only have they had a go at Gary Lineker, they've decided not to broadcast one of the new David Attenborough programmes because it might upset right-wing Tory MPs." Yes, that's correct. I was talking about this last night. Imagine being so right-wing that you find it offensive that somebody wants to save the planet. Just pause and think about that for a moment. Have you thought about it? No. Okay, carry on. Lucy says, if so many asylum seekers are coming to Britain, why can't we fill all the vacancies in our job market? Lucy, that's because if you're an asylum seeker, you're not allowed to work. The government forbids it. The government has also made the asylum process completely broken such that you can't get through it. So we've got all of these vacancies in our job market... And we've got a lot of people who've uh, come here and want to work, but they're not allowed to work because they can't get through the system that would enable them to work. There's a hole in my bucket, dear Liza. Sing! Tom says, I'm worried sick about Match of the Day, as I don't understand the offside rule. For the sake of the nation, can you please explain it to us? Yes, Tom. Yes, I can. If you score a goal and you are on... Damn it. (laughs) Okay, take two. If a team scores a goal and it's your team, they were onside. If a team scores a goal and it's the opposite team, they were offside. There you are. Nutshelled it for you. Paul says media personality cancelled by state broadcaster for commenting on disgusting government narrative. This is what happens when you upset people tiptoeing down the road towards fascism. (laughs) Well, let's not um, let's not get too carried away. The, you, what the government has done is they've set its satnav to uh, to take them down a road that fascists have used. It doesn't necessarily mean that they will get to the same destination. They can always get off that road at any time. John says, apropos of nothing at all, Victor Brox passed away the other day, aged eighty-one. He was keyboards and vocal, vocalists with the Ainsley Dunbar Retaliation, whose work I am unfamiliar with. Victor played with Jimmy and Janice, whose work I am familiar with, and I think voted Best White Blues Singer by Jimi Hendrix and Tina Turner. Last bit, Victor played the High Priest on the original Jesus Christ Superstar. He was an awesome musician, R.I.P. Victor Brox, says John. All of which may be completely correct in every respect. 
Richard said, did you see that Prince Edward is now going to be the Chucky Emperor? He's not going to be able to stand up soon under the weight of all those medals if they give him another one. <laughs> that family, they just, uh, all day long, they're just giving each other uh, badges and silly names and medals. I bet if I looked up on the World Wide Weight right now what the, um, what the King of England's full title is, if, uh, the entire suite of his uh, titles, um, I could do that while you wait. Or you could do it yourself. <laughs> oh, it's too much effort. Homework? <laughs> but, sir, it's the weekend. Julianne texts, Gary was abso freaking lootly spot on with his analogy of the Tory rhetoric with the Nazis in a world of Cruella Bravemans. Be a Gary Lineker, says Julianne. Like I said, they're on the same road. Doesn't mean to say they're going to the same place. They're just using a path that has previously been trodden by fascists. That's all. I mean, that's not a controversial thing to say, is it? I mean, I've been on a road that was previously used by, um, by serial killers. I know that that's actually true, because when I was hitchhiking in America in 19... It was a very bad idea, by the way. In 1980... 80? 80 or 82. I went there twice. Um, I and spent, like, months and months there just hitchhiking around. And I can't remember what I did in each particular year, but I do know that I was hitchhiking down a road that was um, frequented, apparently, by a serial killer who was picking up hitchhikers so i have been down a road that has been used by a hit uh, by a, a serial killer but that doesn't make me a serial killer got it richard says surely there's a halfway compromise with match of the day let lineker carry on but suella braveman could present goal of the month no i think you missed a trick there richard suella braveman could present own goal of the month correct <laughs> <laughs> she opens her mouth and sticks her size 11 boot in it. Have you ever seen anybody looks more awkward in your life? Apart from Theresa May, by the way. Still not missing you, Theresa, if you, in case you were wondering. But you would do well to uh, buy shoes that you can actually walk in. <laughs> that, that's just a friendly tip. As for uh, Corella Braveman, I'm, I've got no idea what... Uh, I mean, it's twisted inside, twisted outside. I'm going to call her the Twisted Sister. Paul tweets, the BBC are doing themselves no favours. They're making enemies on both sides of the argument. Well, that's just, uh, you know, that's being even, even-handed. Um, my favourite text from last night, I, I've been uh, keeping this, uh, and I'll, I'll get to that uh, in a minute, because you, um, Mark, you echoed my thought entirely, but I'll get to that in a minute. First of all, here is Chingford. Hello, John. Oh, hi, hi Nick. Um, yeah, I, I, I was going to phone last night, but you were really on fire last night. I was sort of riveted. <laughs> um, a great evening, I thought. No, um, I, the, the forum that uh, Richie Sunak held on um, refugees on Thursday, there was a great contribution from John McDonnell. Mm. Um, you know, and he, he said that uh, he, he's actually been round to the... Uh, hotels in his constituency that are housing refugees, mm. and he said several of the, you know, they showed the, the um, people there showed him their sort of torture scars and shrapnel wounds, and he he just said that you know so many of them have skills that we desperately need, you know, they're, they're, they're not, you know, they're, they're qualified people, yeah. But he said he said overall, um, he said all of them, they, they definitely want to go out and work. They don't want to be stuck in a I mean, hotel. Well, who would, I, I yeah. I thought it was a very, fashion, a very passionate speech from Mr O'Donnell, who to me is real Labour, you know, yeah. proper Labour, but anyway. It seems, just um, it, it just seems a part of our, um, our I don't know, we, we seem to have developed a masochistic streak in this country. I thought we were uh, a little bit uh, sadistic. But it appears that <clears throat> the uh, the defining trait is masochism, because we'd rather starve to death than have anybody with a foreign accent give us some food, metaphorically speaking. If we were on yeah. fire, we would refuse uh, the uh, help of a fire person if they'd come from Poland, for instance. Mm, mm, no, it, it, it's pretty sad. Meta I mean, Metaphorically it, speaking. It's all going back to the days of the National Front, isn't it? But thank God there isn't a far-right party sort of 
you know, like like the, I mean, the National Front were Nazis. I mean, they used to put stick. I don't know if you remember 1977. I mean, you were probably doing your punk rock thing. Then, 1977. But... Rock and roll. Yes, I was <laughs> listening to uh, the Swell Maps. Anybody remember them? <laughs> Uh, no, um, no, they, 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 uh, but London was covered with National Front stickers, and these charmers used to put razor blades under the, under their stickers. It shows the sort of mentality. Wow! But of course, this massive press, um, you know, revolt against them, brought them down. Thank mm. God! And well, you've brought this show down, if that's any help. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, Talk about a buzzkill. Yeah, we, Good we grief! Won't. Anyway, I've got to go, John. Thanks for that. Taking us down memory lane. 0345 6060 Shaw of Kent tweets, You are spot on about fact that people don't watch Match of the Day for the presenters. I never listen to them. Anyway, I always fast forward. I have no interest in what they've got to say to get paid. The amount of money is mental. Either he is right or wrong. <laughs> or whether, whether he is right or wrong. <laughs> okay. Good to know, Shaw. Thanks for that. And Jim says, You're wrong. <gasps> What? There are many historical comparisons that Lineker could have picked to make the same point. He picked 1930s Germany for a reason, in that we know where that language led. And thus, implicitly, he is saying that unless the government's current policy is binned, we are headed in the same direction. Well, like I said before, Jim, you can be on the road towards a destination. You don't have to go that far. You can get off that road. But if you're on the road, there's no point in saying you ain't. You know, there's... um. Uh, I've I've read this uh, out before. There's uh, and uh, uh, Femi Olawoli. I forgive me. I've never heard anybody pronounce his second name, so I'm just guessing that that's how it's pronounced. He's a prolific uh, tweeter and he's on uh, telly a lot. And he uh, posted this. It, it used to be uh, uh, a poster on sale at the Holocaust Museum gift shop, <laughs> which <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Do you actually want to go through the gift shop in the Holocaust Museum? Not really. I mean, you're going to get a fridge magnet. I don't think so. Anyway, early warning signs of fascism. Now, let's see how many we can count and tick off. Powerful and continuing nationalism. You bet. This is the, this is the greatest country in the world. You only have to uh, ask this bloke. I just reckon we've got the very best people in this country. Much better than the French have, much better than the Belgians have, much better than the Americans have. That doesn't surprise me at all because we're a much better country than every single one of them. Much better country than every single one of them. Powerful and continuing nationalism. Bingo. Disdain for human rights. Correct. Yes. I mean, it's actually alarming how uh, not just pertinent, but how up to date this is. I mean, as in in the news this week, pushing it forwards. Disdain for human rights. Yes. Two out of two. Identification of enemies and scapegoats as a unifying cause. The boat people. (laughs) You win, you lose. Supremacy of the military, not that one. Not really. They've run the military right down. We ain't got no bullets no more. We've got aircraft carriers with no aircrafts. We've got tanks we can't use because uh, they shake their occupants uh, almost literally to death. So not the supremacy of the military, not that bit. Rampant sexism. I don't know about that either. How many have we got so far? Three out of five. Controlled mass media. Yes. The mass media of this country is controlled by uh, a small handful of offshore non-resident oligarchs who appear to want to control the world remotely from their um, hollowed out volcano. Obsession with national security. Kind of. Religion and government are intertwined. Yes, they are. They have um, permanent seats in the House of Lords forever. Corporate power is protected. You bet it is. At all costs. Labour power is suppressed. That's right. Disdain for intellectuals and the arts. Yes, precisely. Get um, Roger Daltrey on the phone and he can uh, explain how Brexit won't affect the uh, the touring possibilities of rock bands. (laughs) Uh, Where are we? Obsession with crime and punishment. Yes. 
they say they're all about it, even while they defund the, uh, the, uh, the law and order business. Fewer police, fewer police stations, fewer judges, fewer courts, etc., so on. Higher crime, lower crime detection rates, yeah, obsession, while saying that they're all about, you know, that we're the party of law and order. Rampant cronyism and corruption. <laughs> yep, that's right. And fraudulent elections. Well, I would say yes, because the Brexit one was based on an entire mountain of lies, all of which have um, been shown to be such since we voted. And this uh, uh, presenting an idea of yourself before you can vote in order to cure a problem that does not exist. Yeah, they're trying to um, make them more fraudulent, it seems to me. They're taking a, uh, a trick from Donald Trump. So how many is that? I mean, that's uh, like 70 percent. Not a good sign. I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying they're, they're going along the same road. They don't have to get to the same destination. They can get off any time they like. 0345 6060 973 text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 60 60 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Listen to him. He knows everything. <laughs> Brixton, Rob. Brixham. What? Brixham. Brixham. Oh, Brixham. Brixham. Bad right, not Brixton. Brixham. No, no. Right. Yes. Brixham. Bad. Yes. Yes. Nick, you bang on about, you know, Gary Lineker and Suella Braverman. Mm. My brother has worked for 42 years in this country. Oh, yes. He cannot claim housing benefit. He cannot get universal credit he can't do anything and my other brother is having to put him up and support him mm. let me guess well, who, whose well, fault that half is a mile down the road yeah people are living in four-star hotels oh, i know a lot of life of luxury let, let me guess who whose fault that is you tell me is it the government's fault well, it's also people like you oh. which i'm a big fan of it's also people like you Banging on in mm -hmm. support of everyone else apart from the British people. Yeah, that's what I do, uh, Rob. That, if that's what you heard, then I'm going to send you one of those kits to remove wax from your ears. You well, think that I do? I do nothing that. but support. But I do nothing. Oh, never mind. I, I, I can't be bothered getting into an <laughs> argument with you about that. No, that's come on, just tell nonsense. Me. Tell me, why can't my brother get benefits? Well, who's, who's been in power for the last 13 years, Rob? Conservatives. And um, would you think that they might have something to do with that? Well, quite a bit. Uh, uh, approximately how much, percentage-wise? Well, why does everyone blame the Conservatives? Rather because they've than... been in power for 13 years, Rob. Would you prefer uh, that we blamed the Labour? Well, I'm sure they've got a bit to do with it, although they're not really? in power. Uh, yeah, so what would they have to do with it, having been out of power well, for 13 the, years? The, 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 the Labour Party, Nick, are, as, as I don't want to say, as weak as beer. You go into a bad pub and you get a bad pint and it's a pint of you-know-what. Rob, they haven't been in power for 13 years. Are you seriously telling me it's their oh, fault? No, they've not been in power for 13 years because they're as weak as a bad pint. Right, so it's the, the state of the country is the Labour's fault because they're weak. <sighs> no. That's not what I said. But it is what you said. I thought that's exactly I, what you I said. I said that the, the, the Labour have not been in power 30, for 13 years yes. because they're as weak as a bad point. Right. So how is the state of the nation Labour's fault? Well, because they've got no one to... as corrupt as the Conservatives, if you like. <laughs> now I'm confused. Now I don't know which side you're arguing for, Rob. <laughs> Do you? Nick... Listen, I, I'm a long-time listener, but I love your, listening to your show, right? Buzz. This country <laughs> is going down the swamp. Yes, exactly. And would you like me, uh, a, a small, insignificant voice on the radio, to, uh, to describe it for you? Or would you prefer that I just told you that everything was okay? 
Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, I don't know that. Right. <laughs> well, you, you think about it, and as soon as you uh, figure Mick, it out, you let Mick, me know, all right. Mick, yeah. you, listen, I listened, I've listened to you for five years. Well, I appreciate it. And, you know, it, not to put a... Uh, Too fine a point on this. A down or that <laughs> yes. on James O'Brien, but oh. you're starting to sound like him a little right. bit. Yeah. You're becoming one-sided. Becoming? Well... <laughs> <laughs> You're nearly as bad as him. Right. OK, well, I'll check myself, Robert. How does that sound? Good. All right. I'm going to, um, in this next news break, I'm going to give myself a good, uh, like a stern talking to. Good. Yeah, I, I, fisticuffs may be involved. I might have to uh, beat myself up a bit. All right. Thanks a lot, Rob. Appreciate it. John emails... Workers in the UK have to strike to try to get a fair wage deal, yet the government have given away millions to foreign governments to clear up their mistakes. Yes. Oh, did you see that um, thing in the mail about the body language? A body language expert figured out which was the, uh, the top dog when uh, Fishy Sunak and Emmanuel Macron met. You know, they had that bromance. Oh, they couldn't stop. Uh, uh, I mean, seriously, guys, take your hands off each other or get a room. One of the two. This is embarrassing. Anyway, the, <clears throat> the body expert uh, figured out uh, which one was uh, on top, so to speak. Can you guess which it was? I'll come to that in a minute. There's so much to talk about, I barely know where to begin. Julian emails, the language of 1930s Germany was an accurate analogy by uh, Gary Lineker. They started with the unionists, the communists and the social democrats, and it ended up with the Holocaust. Those who do not learn from history are com- condemned to repeat it. Julian... The only thing that anybody learns from history is that nobody ever learns anything from history. And let's not get out of control with this um, th- this Holocaust t- talk. Just because you're travelling on the same road does not mean to say you're going to the same destination. They can get off any time they like. It's just, uh, you know, at the moment, a certain uh, type of uh, language is what the, uh, the, the regime seem to have convinced themselves is their route to winning the next election. And you know what? It just might be. There's a poll that's just come out. No, not that poll. I've, I've, got, I've got polls um, uh, coming out my ears. Wait a minute. There's a poll that's just come out. Hang on. Here we go. Labour's polling lead over the Conservative Party has dropped uh, to 11 points, its lowest figure since December. What? Keir Starmer's party, Sir Keir Starmer's party. I notice that the uh, the papers always insist on calling him Sir Keir. I think that they do that because it doesn't play well with your average Labour voter. It doesn't play well with me. Sir Keir. What an absolutely preposterous nation this is. Everybody's got a funny title and a badge. Sir Keir. Oh. <laughs> his party, which has regularly put 20-point leads over the government in recent months, now commands 43% of the vote. Tories are up three percentage points to 32. Why is that then? What is it over the last week or so that uh, the Conservative Party have done that you find so delightful? In January, when Labour enjoyed its la- uh, largest lead of 21 points over, uh, Suna- uh, over Sunak's party, just over half of voters who backed Bodger Johnson said they would have voted for the Conservative Party this time around. Half. Last night's poll shows that figure has now risen to two-thirds. Two-thirds of the people that voted for the Tories last time around are going to do so, uh, planning on doing so again. Why? What is it that you're so delighted about? Is it the uh, ease with which you can get an appointment on the NHS? Is it the speed at which an ambulance will be over your place if you dial 999? (laughs) Is it the efficiency of the police who will um, attend your burglary and apprehend the criminal toot sweet? Is it their ability to um, keep the foreigners out? I mean, which part of this uh, enormous success story that the Conservatives have delivered to to us over the past 13 years are you uh, keen to have continue? Just curious. (laughs) Uh, Jazz texts, with the latest £500 million package for France, the UK have clearly given a billion pounds to France and Rwanda to deal with the boat issue. According to Migration Watch, we have a grand total of uh, £220 million to France and £120 million to Rwanda. And what has been achieved, says Jazz? Well, I'll tell you what's been achieved. We've got a lot less money, so there's that. 
0345-6060-973. Text 84850. Email nicka at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. It's at 10.30, the news headlines with Tim Daly. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 Okie dokie. 0345 6060 973. Chris texts, this country has lost it. I told a pal in the US earlier that we were the laughing stock of Europe. She replied, try being the laughing stock of the world. <laughs> How can it be that two powerful economic countries like the US and the UK can only produce the leadership quality that we have? It has to be deliberate. Yeah, we seem to um, uh, elect into power those who are least able to occupy that position. Don't be rude. 0345. 6060973. Um, don't forget to remind me to read Mark's text because I completely agree with it in every way, shape, or form. And I've, ha- I've held that over from last night. And uh, I have detailed files. You won't forget to remind me, will you? Let's have a call in. One moment, please. Who's been waiting the longest? Uh, Adiola in Enfield. Adiola. Hello, Nick. Yes, How sir. Are you? Great, mate. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, this is my first time actually calling, so yes. happy about that. Um, second of all, um, I like to say I like your show. That's all I just wanted to tell you. Oh. I like your show. But? You're doing a, a cracking job, mate. Oh, there's no but. Um, <laughs> um, and England, I, I really like the way you deal with your callers. It's really good. With, with great respect and patience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> only, only if they deserve it. That's right. Yeah. Usually, usually, I'm firm but fair. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good work. Thanks a lot, Adiola. Another satisfied customer. Jen Jiricon tweets: Are you excited about or even interested in the 50th anniversary of the Dark Side of the Moon? I've listened to it hundreds of times. He says over the past few over the years, and I wonder if it might be a bit of a Bit of a letdown. What? A letdown. No, oh, not the album. The the 50th anniversary edition of the album. Right. Well, it's just going to be the album. I mean, what are they going to do to it? I mean, I Roger um, uh, Roger Waters has re-recorded it, but yeah, it's not going to be better than the original, is it? So, what are they going to do with uh, to tempt those who have, like me, already bought that album about six times already on every format you could possibly think of? Except for um, eight track. <laughs> Do you ever try listening to a, a Pink Floyd album on eight track? It's just abysmal because it just stops all the time. <laughs> it doesn't run as a piece. It's uh, it's just it cut up into individual songs. Terrible. Um, but you know we didn't really do eight track any more than we did um, uh, digital digital DV no DVDs is someone else mini disc. Anybody remember Minidisc? That came and went in a blink of an eye. There was another one in there as well, some sort of uh, digital tape thing. Can't remember. Anyway, stick to um, uh, high-def downloads, baby. Groovy. You'll love it. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do with the 30th anniversary, the 50th anniversary edition of Dark Side of the Moon, but uh, um, I, I probably won't buy it again, 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 again. I mean, you know, won't be fooled again, again. Let's have uh, Manchester, Sam. Yeah. Sam. Yeah. Hi. Sam. Uh, I just wanted to say that someone is maybe you might consider that the fact that the Conservative Party haven't doing so badly. I know you portray that they, they do very, they're doing mm. badly, but may, maybe they haven't done so badly after all. And that's why Labour are going down because people are just saying. Oh, let's go back to Conservative. Right, but by what measure are the Conservatives not doing that badly? By what measure are they mm. doing things badly, apart from when you just blow up everything and make it bad? Me? They're not actually doing badly. Me? Yeah, you. I so, know, you, so, you see, so the you problem see, with... Hang on, see, wait, wait a minute. The, pro- the problem with the Conservative Party's performance is that is, ma- is me. <laughs> no. Really? The, 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 you think the problem, you think the Conservative Party have a problem. Yes. No one else does. Well, I think that this country has a problem under their leadership. Yes, yeah, that but, seems to but, be but, um, undoubtable. 
Yeah, but there's two things over here. Number one is just look at the voice of the country giving their opinion on polls. They don't think that. Well, they do. Th- they they do think that to Gary. <laughs> It really makes sense. Well, yes, yes, they do. I mean, the latest poll shows the gap narrowing, but it still puts Labour on 43 and the Tories on 32. Now, last time I checked, 32 is a smaller number than 43. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, good point. Um, yes, it is. No, but they're doing better than they... Um, nobody's going to deny are? they did do terrible. They did do terrible. The, co- the Tories did. Now. Right, OK, by what measure? Better in what way? By not doing bad. <laughs> that's it. Yes, yes, no, you can laugh. No. That's it. Well, yeah, that's I it. am laughing because that's not really an answer. But how how are they because doing better? What is it that they are governing. doing that's doing... They're just governing. They're just governing. Yeah, they're but... not doing... They're not in the plus. They're just just going going ahead with things. Right, like what? Just what is it that governing. they're doing that, it, that attracts you so? By not doing anything bad. What's the government's <laughs> job? The government's <laughs> job. I'm not. I'm not here. I'm not here to tell to tell them what the government's jobs are. Right. The government has their jobs. And what what doing are their job you here? Nicely. What are you here to tell us? I'm here to tell you that the way you're portraying the Conservative Party is unfair. Is not how people view it. Right. It is how people no. view it. More people would prefer it's, the Labour Party was in power than the Conservative Party. Correct, but they're yeah. not doing badly now. Yeah, but they are. They're doing very, very badly indeed. Well, that doesn't by, make by sense. What, by, what measure are, sense. by what measure are they doing well, Sam? I'll tell you, it doesn't make sense to say they're doing badly if they are regaining their momentum. It doesn't make, well, you could say the, that the result of one poll you... does not mean they're regaining their momentum. Uh, they've only gone up three percentage points since December, and they now sit at 32%, which is less than a third of those who expressed a preference having the intention of voting for them next time around, which means that they would get wiped out. Which part of that suggests to you that they're doing well? The fact that they're not going down in the poll. They're going up. <laughs> they're building up. Imagine somebody falls down. Yeah. Imagine someone falls down. Mm-hmm. And, then they, and then they get back up again. Right. And then they're getting back up. How, how, about, how, about, the, if, they, how about if they, they fall they down? Up? Wait a minute. How, wait wait a minute. minute. No, you wait a minute. How, how, if they fall down, what would happen if they don't get back up again? Um, did you say that again? Sorry. No. Well, all right. <laughs> if somebody <laughs> falls down and they don't get back up again... But the, but the polls are saying that they are getting back up again. That's no, the what polls. The, the, what this poll suggests is that they've actually fallen from a large height and they've they've bounced off the floor, dead, and then they will it, they will shortly rejoin the floor permanently. You get you're getting really really technical over here with with yeah. my. Well, that is my, true. That whole that whole uh, bouncing thing is just yeah, very very no, very scientific. Yeah. No, it's it's just it's as simple as you fall down, you're on zero, you, you you're in a bad place. Hmm. You slowly get back up. As right. you're getting back up, you're still in a bad place, but you are doing better. Yeah. It will get to a point where you're going to be standing fully on your feet. Okay. So. As long as you are getting back up, everyone mm-hmm. else who's standing on their feet around you is going to be better than you. That may be, but right. you in your way, are still doing better. Yeah, you're doing... So they're doing better than they were, not better in relation to anybody yeah. else. Right, OK. No, but they're going to eventually catch up. They are not doing a bad job. They but, are making progress. The, they are doing a bad job. That They've made really? progress in one poll and gone up 3% from a dismal uh, failure and that's a, last and, December doesn't really mean anything at all. But they're not going down and they're not staying the way they are. In this, exactly. yeah, in, in this particular poll, yeah, you, you might be right there, Sam. OK, I'm convinced. Well, 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 <laughs> Anything just to get you to go away. Uh, you're right, Sam. I am wrong and you're right. How does that sound? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Phew. I should have said that right at the beginning and then I wouldn't have wasted 10 minutes. But it was a delight talking to you, Sam, and I wish you all the best. 0345... 6060973. Um, Fanto tweets. These, I'm still on last night's texts and tweets and emails. By 2043, we won't need HS2. We'll be underwater. No need for an Uber. We'll need a scuba. <laughs> a listener with material. Oh, no. I'll let that one go. And Dave says, at Dunkirk, 
We got 300,000 troops across the channel with the might of the German army trying to stop them. I don't think a few drones and reluctant coppers will stop the migrant boats coming over. It's a political showcase. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. It's a political showcase, precisely, in a nutshell. Completely correct in every respect. They don't want to uh, fix this problem. They want this problem to continue so that they can keep blaming the boat people. Just like they don't want Brexit to be fixed so they can keep blaming the EU for being mean to us. Oh, big news about babies. Did you read this? This is on the front page of the Financial Times. This is what we're doing with our freedoms. You know that we don't have to follow the, uh, the, the ruinous policies of the EU anymore. Now that we have our freedom. <sighs> New EU rules slashing the amount of arsenic permitted in baby food have highlighted how Northern Ireland is caught between different rules set by Brussels and London. Days after the UK and EU leaders sealed their agreement last week, Brussels cut the level of arsenic, the carcinogenic substance in infant formula and baby food by 80% and set limits for its use in rice, fruit juice and salt. Arsenic. But consumers in Northern Ireland can still buy baby food with higher levels of arsenic if they import it from Great Britain. Isn't that great? Food manufacturers in Northern Ireland, which remained in the EU's single market after Brexit, will have to follow the new rules about how much arsenic is, is allowed to be put into baby food. <laughs> but they will have to follow the new EU rules if they want to export to Ireland or elsewhere in the EU. Food manufacturers in Northern Ireland will have to follow new EU rules about reducing the amount of cancer-causing arsenic in baby food if they want to, to trade with the EU. But if they just want to trade with uh, the rest of Great Britain, well, that's OK. This is great news for babies. It's just not, news, it's just not good news for British babies or Northern Irish babies. So said Andy Meharg, a professor of plant and soil science at Queen's University, Belfast. He said the UK should follow the EU's progressive move. If they don't, it sends the worst signal for the most precious cohort of citizens. <laughs> this is the front page of the Financial Times. Has anybody even talked about this? Because we're too busy talking about Gary Blumin Lineker. Michael Bell, executive director of the Northern Ireland Food and Drink Association, said his members were likely to adopt the EU's higher standards, which take effect this month. He says, we're trying to maintain the ability to trade with both Europe and, the, and Great Britain, which was possible before Brexit. While the baby food sector in Northern Ireland is relatively small, he said the broader food and drink business is the largest industry in the region, employing 113,000 people. Maintaining alignment with EU food legislation to ensure it can continue to export means the question of different food standards will go on and on. Exactly. The government doesn't want to fix this problem. It wants this problem to continue on and on and on and on and on. It'll give them a, an excuse for their own dismal failures. Oh, it's the EU's fault. They're being mean to us. The British government said the new rule about arsenic in a baby food would not apply for internal UK trade under the Windsor framework. Well, isn't that great? We left the European Union so we don't have to follow their woke policies about reducing the amount of poison in baby foods. That is sovereignty. That is, thank God we're out. 0345 6060 973, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, Nick Abbott, Alexa, send a comment to LBC. I am not one of your fans! <laughs> Don't forget to remind me to read Mark's text from last night because it's going to send me off on one. Mark texts, oh no, Patrick texts, Who needs travel agents, Nick? A free life in the lush, warm tropics seems so appealing. All my wife and I need to do is hop over to France, chuck away our passports, jump onto a rubber dinghy, coming back to Blighty, and be awarded a free flight to Rwanda. 
Anyone want to join us? No. No. It's a big no from me, Patrick. Wish you all the best. Send us a postcard. Will emails, the British broadcasting conservatives may feel that they have won against Lineker. They have indeed won, just as the Titanic won against the iceberg. (laughs) Yeah, that boat showed that iceberg a thing or two. I think it's funny that, um, I mean, what a switch. It happened so quickly. I mean, yesterday it was all about, oh, is Gary Lineker going to get sacked? And today it's all about, well, the head of the BBC says, I'm not going to resign. (laughs) What a switch. Ashford, Milan. Hey, Nick. How, how are you? you? How are you? Yeah, good, um, thanks. Nick, don't forget to read Mark's text. I will read Mark's text. Um, I was going to talk about how we're in kind of an elected dictatorship uh, under this Tory government the last few years. I, the amount of times I've phoned in and the amount of demonstrable examples we've had in the last few years of just this government doing what they want um, – without any regard to common sense or ethics or, or so on. Yeah, I think e- e- allowed... even the Tory common sense group doesn't have any. Yeah, because the, the, the moderates were burnt out in the 2019 election, so they were u- ushered out of the party. Yeah. A- anybody with uh, half a brain, I wonder why. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we... I can't think. Yeah, and, and anyone with um, an analytical thoughts or, or intelligence, well, no, you, you're not allowed to be part of this, this government. Yeah. And... Uh, there's there's two kind of problems. Well, sorry, problems. They they've got a firm grip of the media, as has been demonstrated um, all, all for the last few years. I mean, crying out loud. Actually, when it came to actually, I think it may be the other way around. I mean, they're on the same side right now, but I think the media has got a grip on the government. Really? I yeah. didn't. I didn't. I th- I thought that. Uh, I thought I've seen many examples of how the media, including BBC News, had do the government's. Um, oh, you! I'm not talking about wishes. the BBC. I'm, to- I'm oh. talking about the you know the rest of the media, the, the right wing oligarch offshore owned media, all of them. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So the the, the, the usual Telegraph and yeah, the Mail, the mail. Sun, ch- ch- cheerleading. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. Just, it's just r- r- ridiculous. That's where the I mean, power is. I, I, I remember on the subject of w, WTO terms, the BBC thought that Ian Duncan Smith was equal to the former Director General of the WTO in yeah. discussing WTO <laughs> terms. And I was just cringing, just yeah. going, this is painful. Is. But there's also another problem. Um, uh, can, I, can I say something controversial? Oh, no. Controversial? <laughs> yes. I, I think it's been demonstrated that it's uh, Tory voters hard group of Tory voters have been demonstrated to be utterly stupid in their understanding. And you know what? The government knows... Now, uh, that hang, the... hang on a minute, Milan. Is that the controversial part? Or is, yeah. it, is the controversial <laughs> part yet to come? That's, <laughs> Just that's, checking. That's... that's... <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the controversial right, part. Right, OK. <laughs> because it's, I think, and the government knows that uh, a good group of the electorate are, are easily conned at best and yes. mind-numbingly stupid at worst. Well, that is that out. is true, but that doesn't necessarily um, apply only to those on the right. That applies to the left as well and those down the middle. Don't forget, Milan, the masses are asses. <laughs> but it, 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 and and it's no wonder they come out with stupid rhetoric. Like, for example, oh, these lefty uh, mm. solicitors who represent yeah, some, uh, they they're stopping. Uh, Lawyer, speaking as a lawyer, a, a solicitor does not have the power to stop something happening. It's the judge who decides. But they know that parts of the electorate yes. are too stupid to know the difference. Well, and they'll keep yeah, saying not, the, not stupid necessarily. I mean, you might be more accurate with ignorance. But stu- stupidity does imply um, something worse than ignorance. I mean, I, I'm ignorant of no end of things. We all are ignorant of no end of things. It just means that we don't know that. Uh, you know, but uh, stupidity implies something worse. But, um, yeah, let's say that uh, 46% of the population is stupid. Do you reckon 52, 40, 48? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Let, let's ask an expert. And one? <laughs> one percent. Um, yeah, uh, two? Two percent. Um, six million. <laughs> six million percent. Um, have you seen any good films lately, Nick? Elvis. Elvis? Yeah. 
Oh, my God. Oh, okay. Not, saw, not my kind of film. No, I know. I saw uh, what might be more up your road is um, I did a Quentin Tarantino triple bill over the last couple of weeks. I saw a Pulp Fiction, of course, then uh, Once Upon a Time in America, which is superb. And you probably get, you'd be more into this one, Death Proof. Have you seen Death Proof? I haven't seen Death Proof. It's on the list. Oh. I've, I, it's... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, I saw a film called... Um, I don't think you've seen this. I thought it was quite good. It's called I'll Take Your Dead. It's a horror, <laughs> it's a horror film. It's a very... Don't good... tell me. It's a musical. <laughs> <laughs> I got that wrong, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a no from you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, no problem. All right, good work. Thanks a lot, Milan. 0345 6060 973. Uh, Simon emails. Okay, we're, we're up to tonight now. Right. Okay, this, this is tonight's messages. How many pages have we got? Oh, my God. How many? Ten. Ten. <sighs> Simon says, just watch Match of the Day. It was different, but I actually prefer it. <laughs> I tweeted this already today. Yeah, about six hours ago, I tweeted, you know, there's an enormous... Uh, where, like, um, uh, wow. Can't finish that sentence. I'll um, I'll tell you what my brain sounded like during the course of uh, that stumbling. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit like that. I tweeted out that there's an enormous pool of people who never watch Match of the Day, who who are just itching to tweet, well, it's better with uh, without them. Sack them all! <laughs> anyway, he says, just watch Match of the Day. It was different, but I actually prefer it. I've spoken to a few people who have watched it for the first time in years. Makes you realise just how intellectually challenged uh, footballers are. Thanks to the lads... The lad's done great. It's all credit to the lads and the fans and the manager. Yeah, well, they're not paid for their intellectual prowess, are they? They're paid to think with their feet. Still the best game ever to watch. Ever, ever, ever. That's just a fact. Don't talk rugby at me, because I'm not remotely interested. Boring! Bunch of steroidal lunks running into each other. How is that even a game? 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email Nick A at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. Oh, by the way, I have to apologise. This is not my fault. It was like that when I got here. Last night's show isn't available as a podcast yet. But I'm told it's coming. I just don't know when. I am so embarrassed. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Oh, hello. Everything is going extremely well. You bet your life it is. 0345 6060 973. Ahmed emails, so Boris Johnson has put his father forward for a knighthood. Seems very conniving to me. What's your view? <laughs> I think it's an absolute blooming outrage. What a country this is. I mean, good grief. Talk about just la flat out laughing at us. I mean, why didn't he go the whole hog and um, award a knighthood to himself? I bet he looked into it. I bet he uh, did a Donald Trump. Can I get myself out of jail? Don't be rude. Exactly. <laughs> a knighthood. What, for excellence in being daddy? God. I think that um, his, uh, his Chasness, you know, that guy, he should just say no. I mean, can't he just say no? What's he for? No offence, Your Majesty. <laughs> um, Tom says, I am sick of this country. It's always cold. The government is always talking about small boats and the BBC are cancelling free speech. Should we blame Jeremy Corbyn? Yeah, thanks a lot, Jeremy Corbyn. You see what you've done? <laughs> Will you ever stop meddling? 
And、um, Pat tweets two words to hold the BBC's stance. Two words hold, hole, I mean. Hole is what you th- I think you mean there, Pat. Hole the BBC's stance below the waterline. Andrew and Neil, also freelance on the channel, and as well as hosting, hosing. <laughs> Maybe I should have read this before I read it out. Very, very complicated, Pat. Can you not make this a bit simpler? Two words hole the BBC's stance below the waterline. Andrew and Neil. Also freelance on the channel, and as well as hosing his views all over Twitter. And to put the double standards on the front page, he was also chairman of the Spectator. Nothing to see here, says Pat. Gold is green. Hello, John. John? Oh, John? Is there anybody out there too late? Let's have a Bournemouth. Christine. Chris- Hello. Christine. Oh, hi. I've been waiting a while. Oh, really? Stop whining. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>、uh, bugger off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to cut to the chase. And what I really feel is、um, that at the minute, I think our country looks like a real idiot in the, the face of things. But. These are some little notes I put down. If we actually ran our country as a business, we'd be bankrupt, which we nearly are. Yeah, but, but countries、um, aren't run as a business. I know that. I'm more than aware. But what, what I'm trying to say is if we could make Great Britain great again,、yeah. um, it would be so amazing. Wouldn't that be fantastic? But, How would we go about making it great again?、Um, well, Okay, all the argument in Parliament all the time, what you see、um, is what you get. But all they do is argue, argue, argue. And I remember being like a tiny little baby, and I'm nearly 60 now. 60 years、so、old. Oh, thank you, nearly. <laughs> and, but still very young at heart. Yes. And、um, the thing is, is that nothing's changed. Since 1960. That's not true, though, Christine, is it? That is completely untrue. Is it? Yes. Don't you remember the 1970s? The 1970s were awful. I mean, they were great for art, like I music. Know. music. I, I know, we had the blackouts and the coal mining thing and、yeah. everything. Nothing worked、okay. at all. I mean, you think that nothing works now. Transport you back, yourself back to the 1970s. And you can do that by just、um, employing a, an old television program. Just look at old episodes of The Sweeney, and they used to charge around、oh, bu- uh, at this、okay. massive building site that was, that was basically London. London was just a pile of rubble in the 1970s. And no, no, look we, at it now. I know. No. <laughs> no, amazing. But what I'm saying is,、um, I know I'm probably living in a. Fantasy. A, in a world of I, make believe. I, I was actually going to say a bubble. Yeah. But, but wouldn't it be amazing if, like, just for once, all the parties could get together?、Mm. We dissolved Parliament because it is so old fashioned. It is so out of date. It goes back so far. Yeah. And we, we got. The, um, well, all the good people to come together and sort it out with the healthcare department, working pensions,、mm-hmm. like immigration. Everybody should、uh, come together and be with one another right now. I know, I know I, you're going to want the... to. I want to buy the world a Coke and perfect harmony. I know you're going to take the Mickey out to、yeah. me, but listen,、mm. I've I've, I've actually had quite a troubled life, actually. Right.、Um, I'm not. Okay, well, we don't, but we don't need to go into that, though, Christine, because it's not relevant、no, to the、don't. point you're making. But, or, And you're just the point I'm making is, is that why can't we. Get together.、Um, Come on, people. Yeah. Do a spring clean and, like, <laughs> like, for, <laughs> like for once. Yeah.、Um, Do the shaken like, back to this entire country. Let's put the freshness <laughs> back. back. Yes.、Oh, No, listen, I'm not a housewife.、Um, but、um, what I'm trying to say is、um, I've been through a lot myself. Yeah, like, you said that. But we, we, but we don't need to know about that because it's not relevant、okay. to, to your point. It's not relevant、no. at the minute. Okay. But what,、uh, what I'd love to do is dissolve the whole of Parliament. Yeah, in acid. 
<laughs> no, that's not fair. No, just dissolve it and get everybody around the table and knock some heads together, yes? I didn't, yes. I didn't say, of I didn't course. say that either. I, I think that's what you just said, yeah. No, you, I said I'd like to dissolve Parliament and you said in acid, and I thought yeah. that was quite funny. No, not but really. What I, Offensive. No, but, but what I was trying to say is that... You just want people to get together and work for the benefit no, of all humankind. No, no. You, you don't want best, that. No, the best... The best people we have in our country yes. at the moment... Who like, are who? Name one. Um, Name one. All the people... Northern Ireland, like Scotland, everything. Wales. Uh, actually... Um, Other countries are available. I, I know. But, like, at the moment, I couldn't probably... Name one, and, and it is, isn't that oh, a shame? Oh, come on, Christine. There must be one, one single person that uh, would get your vote. Um, Give them complete control over everything that happens in this country, and let's see what happens. Name the person. Do you know, to be really honest, I, to be really honest, I couldn't name one at the minute, because... I think that... Now, is, is, that, is that because you can't actually think of one? Or no, none no, of them pass a, muster? No, 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 not at all. Right. It, the thing is, yeah, n- not passing muster, absolutely. Mm. And the thing is, is that if some of these people were, like, true and honest and actually weren't worried about what the other people were thinking yeah, they'd, in they'd, Parliament. If they were true and honest, they'd, they'd resign and live the rest of their lives in shame at what they've done. Oh, they probably wouldn't be in shame. They'd probably just go off and say, ha, ha, ha. Well, yeah, exactly right. They'd be so happy they can hardly count. <laughs> Having monetized their position, precisely. Yeah, exactly that. And, and I think that's what's happening at the minute in GB. Hmm. And... I, I just, I'm so, do you know what, it's, I'm almost ashamed to, to say I'm British. <gasps> Sharp intake of breath. I know. And <laughs> I, will, I, I will say, I've lived... Well, you know, in, lived, in Dorset, I mean, it's hardly Britain, is it? I mean, it's so far... Oh, hello. It's so far I, away. I, I mean, does it, no, does it, it even doesn't. count? You're practically in France, Christine. No, I'm not, because I've lived in Spain, I've lived in Australia and the Caribbean. Right, that doesn't and sound very patriotic. I, I, no, only because of, like... What, like, this, con- um, this country is a last resort to you? No, not at all, because I'm here, and unfortunately, yeah. um, having to deal with... Uh, listen, you don't want to go into what I'm doing. No, but, I don't. But, uh, no, but what I'm saying is... What is are you that, saying? I've seen how other countries work. Right. So Bingo. Better. Wouldn't it be nice to uh, be like another country? Like pick any uh, any other country that works relatively <laughs> oh, well. Let's do that. I, Let's do what they have do. I, have I... Oh, that, does that mean I've luck, won a lucky number for something? Christine, you've won the <laughs> car. <laughs> oh, no. oh, my God. Yes, check in your driveway <laughs> right now. That car yes, is sitting please, on its uh, please, sitting on your please. the car that's sitting on your driveway is yours. No. Just just pick up the keys I, and I, drive I away. Me. I hope it's not electric. <laughs> I can't charge it. I've got nowhere to charge it. <laughs> I I hope it's not electric. Well, uh, good news, Christine. It's not electric. Correct. In fact, it doesn't exist. You'll never have to fill that car up, Christine. You'll never have to uh, wash it or empty the ashtrays because it does not exist. This offer is not available in your area. Always read the label. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks a lot, Christine, for whatever that was. 0345 6060 um, apropos of nothing at all, Julius texts, uh, he's just wondering, you know, out loud about, uh, you know, nothing in particular. And he says, how many times do you need your nose broken to be a victim of domestic abuse? Well, that's just a, a general question about, uh, you know, general topics. I mean, he could have uh, thought of a question about anything, really, but it just came to him about, uh, you know, getting your nose broken. Brian Tex, I think the Tory government has set its sat-nav to, tr- <laughs> to Trumpton. <laughs> Trumpton. Hmm. Right. I don't remember the, uh, the police coming down on um, uh, crowds protesting the uh, lack of free speech in Trumpton, but, uh, you know, maybe I'll re-watch that programme. 
I think I'd better watch it out again. And Daniel says, just notice the Right Honourable Nadine Doris describes herself in a Twitter bio as a recovering cabinet minister. Surely it's... <laughs> Surely it's us who are doing the recovering. <laughs> Although I do wish she'd let us go cold turkey. Yeah. I've got detailed files on all of these people. Everything that I've uh, been speaking about so far, I have, um, I've got pages and pages and pages of it. And only a brief a three-hour show in which to get it done. And already I've wasted an hour and a quarter. <sighs> you believe that? Has this show started yet? God, it'd be great when it begins. This is LBC. With Nick Abbott. Are you trying to be funny? Because I'm all out of laughs. There is nothing funny about it. Judy tweets, Since when did impartiality become a reasonable excuse to avoid the truth? You can't handle the truth, Judy. And Adrian texts, I am mostly on your side. Mostly. <laughs> but, we, but we need to get the facts correct regarding the David Attenborough issue. The BBC commissioned five episodes, all of which will be broadcast. A sixth episode was commissioned by the World Wrestling Federation and the Royal Society for the Prevention of Birds. The BBC are making this available on iPlayer. The sixth episode was never intended to be broadcast, so says Adrian. Sounds like insider information. Now we know. 0345 6060 Don't forget to tell me to read out Mark's text. Uh, but first, here's Colin Sydenham. Hello, Joe. Hi there. Hello there. How are you doing? Good, good thanks. <laughs> I'm thoroughly depressed, Nick. Oh, no. Whinging and whining and moaning. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this poll um, showing the Tories closing the uh, gap on, the, on Labour. Only one poll, only one. Yeah. That's one reason to stay optimistic, isn't it? Because one poll is one poll. But yeah. the trends are alarming, and particularly the timing, because this this week just happens to be also the week that the Tories seem to have found their tune for the next two years. Oh yeah, they've been uh, they've been tuning uh, up uh, this harp for ages. Yeah. Well, I raise you your Pink Floyd, and I give you Led Zeppelin, the Immigrant Song. Mm-hmm. And I suspect that we're going to hear it quite a lot for the next couple of years. Over and over and over again. When they're not talking about immigrants, they're going to be talking about woke. And when they're not talking about woke or immigrants, they'll be talking about woke immigrants. Wouldn't that be awful? Uh, well, it's our future. Well, what would also be awful would be if they actually solved some of the main problems with immigration rather than just saying, uh, shouting loudly about things that are just deeply wrong and, and offensive, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, but, but the point is not to solve the problem. The point is to shout loudly about it. Exactly, exactly. And the louder you shout, the more that this uh, masochistic plurality of, uh, of the United Kingdom will, uh, will dance along to their tune. And it seems to be back in circles because every time we kind of feel like there's something to be a little bit optimistic about, maybe we're going to return to sanity. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I like Keir Starmer, uh, and I think he'd do a good job. He uh, doesn't kind of strike up, you know, that huge excitement, but that's probably yeah. what we need. You can say that we, again. A little boredom of uh, with the politics might not go amiss, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and obviously Rishi Sunak has... Uh, has obviously inspired people uh, with his utter dullness. But unfortunately, <laughs> he's got the exact same people uh, stood behind him. I, I, I honestly, honestly just couldn't have possibly imagined that we could get worse than Pretty Brutality. No, every time you think they couldn't, they couldn't find anybody worse, they, they seem to find a way. Yeah, here comes another one. Even worse than the, than, the, than the last one. Yeah, here comes a new boss. Even worse than the old boss. Rock and roll! Terrifying. Yeah. But um, it's all okay, though, because yeah. it's a diverse cabinet. Right. Yeah, that's and right. That's, yeah. They, they, uh, they may uh, look diverse, but they don't think that way. No, they don't feel no. it. <laughs> and by the way, Masochistic Plurality would be an excellent uh, album uh, title for, like, Rush or somebody like that. Let's, masochistic let's, uh, plurality. In fact, Muse. Muse should release an album called Masochistic, masochistic Plurality. Plurality. Yeah, be right up there, early. Yeah. I do like that. OK. Yeah, All right. Um, excellent um, work there, Joe. Thanks a lot, mate. 0345 6060 973. Talking to Rishi Sunak. Oh, all right, then. I'll read that text from last night. Now, it contains uh, the F uh, word, so prepare yourself. 
Mark text, Sunak looks like the world's most reluctant fascist. All right, just take that word fascist out. He ain't no fascist. I don't think his heart is in being a cold-blooded autocrat, says Mark. No, neither do I. I don't believe you, Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak rounded on lefty lawyers this week who he said were thwarting efforts to crack down on illegal migration. Does anybody actually believe that Fishy Sunak thinks that lawyers are lefty? No. I mean... It's a paper-thin act, and it's just not believable, Fishy. You should get one of them distraction Tories to do this sort of thing. You know, one of those bellowing buffoons that sit beside you. I mean, Rishi Sunak is a bloke who looks like he spares his time, spends his spare time with lawyers. You know, having a catered dinner party over his pool extension. He doesn't refer to lawyers as lefty. That's learned behaviour. And it doesn't really suit him. Just like those skinny ties don't really suit him. And the hair. You don't need to put all of that product in your hair. You just don't. And meanwhile, Home Secretary Cruella Braveman reportedly wrote to Tory party members claiming an activist blob of left-wing lawyers, civil servants and the Labour Party had opposed legislative attempts to curb small boat crossings in the Channel. It's incredible, isn't it, that a a party that was elected with a stonking majority can't get anything done because of the Labour Party that's been out of power for the past 13 years. And there's no such thing as a lefty lawyer. It's just lawyers that are acting according to the laws that the government pass. I mean, how pathetic are these people in power that they can't get anything done when they have a majority of 80 seats I mean, exactly how many seats do they need to be able to achieve anything while in power? 80%? 90%? All of them? And the attacks prompted claims by Labour that the new illegal migration bill was a gimmick intended to allow the Tories to portray their opponents as being soft on immigration. Yeah, spot blooming on. That's only what it is. It's a trick. You know, these urban sophisticates, these millionaire lounge lizards, the reactionary right of the Tory party, don't actually believe any of the stuff they're coming out with. What they're relying on is that the public don't realise that they're just being phony. I love the poorly educated. Precisely. The Prime Minister told MPs that the government had a clear plan to stop small boat crossings while defending its bill which bars individuals considered to have entered Britain illegally from claiming asylum. I mean, the bill is written in a way that positively invites lawyers to tell them it can't work. It's like a child who says they want to paint the walls with a felt tip, knowing that mummy won't let them. So they wail, and then mummy buys them an ice cream, which is what they wanted in the first place. And the ice cream in this analogy is the constant fighting with unseen forces who want to take our biscuits and our precious sovereignty. The legislation unveiled in the House of Commons on Tuesday aims to reduce the number of people entering the UK across the channel. Last year, that reached a record 45,000 because of the bill that uh, this bloke signed. I I can't comment on that. Yeah, that guy. It's his fault. 45,000. A record number last year. If a country of 65 million people can't figure out a way to deal with 45,000 damp, desperate people, then it's not a very well country. A very well run country, is it? I mean, unless the system has been deliberately engineered to fail so that these actors in government can employ the mantle of victimhood. I mean, if passed, it would impose a legal duty on the Home Secretary to remove asylum seekers to Rwanda or a safe third country or back to their country of origin which of course is interesting because the government itself called Rwanda a dangerous country of uh, murder and torture and disappearances and terrorism I mean if it's so safe would any member of the cabinet want to take a holiday there no security just them and a fistful of cash any takers I mean here's how silly it is they're saying the quiet part out loud putting it on paper they are Braverman wrote a letter to MPs on Tuesday 
She said the chance that the bill would breach Britain's commitments under the European Convention on Human Rights was more than 50%. What? So there we are. They're introducing a bill they know will fail. It's the failure itself that's the point. I mean, if it passed, they wouldn't be able to whine about snowflakes presenting them from acting if it passed. If it passed, they would actually have to start doing something because there'd be no excuses anymore. Same as Brexit. If it was solved, they wouldn't be able to blame the EU for picking on us, holding us back, not letting us have our freedom. Sunak accused the Labour leader, Keir Starmer, of being just another lefty lawyer standing in our way. You know, which might be believable if, say, 30p Lee said it, or that Gullis chap. Or even someone like Smug. My view. Even someone like him, it would be believable. But the cosmopolitan man about town, Fishy Sunak, it's just not him, is it? I don't believe you, Fishy Sunak. Have you been kidnapped? Blink once for yes. Meanwhile, the Bar Council said the attacks by Sunak and uh, Braveman betrayed, quotes, a startling and regrettable ignorance of the role of lawyers representing clients within the legal framework uh, created by Parliament. And again, I don't believe that they're ignorant of the law. They're just hoping you are. 0345 6060 973. Wrexham. Hello, Ben. Hi, Nick. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Um, I just want to know how you deal with the current state of politics in this day and age because i turned 25 not that long ago and 25. Been kind of... yeah <laughs> oh i feel a lot older um yeah i've only been kind of aware of politics properly or paid attention to it for the last six years or so and i was just like it i can't pay attention to it every day because it just <laughs> drives me mental i yes. don't know how you do it uh, I don't do it, and I recommend that you don't do it either. Catch up once a week, Ben. Just right, don't watch the TV news, and uh, maybe don't buy a paper. Just flick through uh, Mail Online or whatever your uh, paper of choice is about maybe once a week, and you'll be all caught up. And then the rest of the time, you can uh, go and do uh, 25-year-old things. Go out, enjoy yourself. You're worth it. <laughs> Oh, I wish it was that simple. <laughs> it is. It is that simple, Ben. Put on your hat, coat, scarf and gloves and get out there and mingle. <laughs> I just feel like I'm in a very bad episode of The Thick of It at the moment. Right. Well, I haven't seen The Thick of It, so I can't really uh, respond oh, to that. But, Nick, uh, but you need to see uh, it now. Yeah, yeah, I've been, uh, there's another guy setting me homework. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ben. I'll put it on my list. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. It's 11.30, the news headlines with Tim Daly. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. You're joking. 0345 6060 973. Gary texts a warning to all Tories. Uh, all Tory voters and all the Conservative politicians, you are now destined to lose the next election. Labour could now put any leader in charge and they will win due to the BBC's overreaction to both Lineker and Attenborough. <laughs> what? The Tories are likely to lose anyway, but unless the BBC reverse their decision, it is possible that the Tories may never win again, ever. I don't think they realise how popular both people are. A bit stupid not to realise that, though, says Gary. Yeah, well, um, David Attenborough has uh, pr- practically got sainthood status in this country. And if you pick a fight with him, then you p- <laughs> you're picking a fight with Britain. Why would anybody do that? And um, as for Lineker, well, it seems as though the nation is on his side. You know, apart from uh, the a few people who are intent on uh, prosecuting the war on woke, which, I don't know, I- I'm a bit bored by that now, aren't you? I mean, it was entertaining for a while there, you know, uh, purple-faced... Uh, <laughs> fumers on telly harumphing about um oh god i don't know statues and drag queens and whatever the issue of the day you might be woke this woke that it all sounds a bit stupid really doesn't it i mean it's a bit i don't know childish is that all they got haven't they got anything else i'm bored of that now haven't you got anything else any thoughts bodge yeah 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 wait, 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 yeah wait, he's wait. thinking he'll come up with something don't you worry about it they could put uh, the Lizbot back in charge absolutely <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, that wouldn't be boring, would it? Oh, yeah, but woke this and woke that. Really, are they going to keep that up for the next, what, year? Keep us Trying to keep us all on side? Is that all you've got? I'm bored. <laughs> Des emails, most employers need a DBS. What? What, an Aston Martin? What's a DBS? Check before you can get the job. As these migrants have no paperwork and we don't know who they are, they can't get a job. Yeah, well, they can't get a job until they go through the system. And the system is deliberately broken, so they can't get through the system to get a job. So they're stuck on, like, a £5 like, give-out per day. Don't spend it all in the same place. <laughs> 0345 6060 973. Windsor, Elizabeth. Hi, Nick. Elizabeth. Well, I've been waiting. Oh, hello, darling. I've been waiting for 36 minutes. Stop so whining. Is... Well, why not? I cannot speak as long as the lady from Dorset because I can't think of where to start in this. I'm going to go back to the before. DBS is the, the vetting system to make sure you are not, you haven't got any hidden crimes, like not safeguarding, you know, that. You know, right, so not, not an Aston Martin. No, unfortunately. No. That, and it was not a DBS either, as you know. I've got some mad... Now, I, will, I don't know where to start here. Start at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. <laughs> now, number one, as far as lefty lawyers are concerned, um, it may interest your caller or whoever to know that Keir Starmer was a lawyer, at, and it may still be, a barrister in Doughty Chambers. Yeah. I have got three, I've got two, a silk and two high level lawyers in my family, unfortunately. We are medics. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. Well, we have four children. We thought we'd have four doctors around the table, oh. but none of them are. Right. Okay, they didn't. And it's a good thing, too, because by the time Tony Blair had finished trashing the medical education and I'm a nurse, senior nurse tutor, the nurse education, and what they did with nursing and medicine, we, don't, we are so pleased they're not there, okay? Right, so, Tony Blair so, ruined the uh, NHS. Is that your position? I would, would you like me to read you from 24 Hours to Save the NHS, written by the first holder of the, the, the post that Simon Stevens held, you know, head of NHS England? Would NHS I, England would England I like you to, Hang on a minute. Would I like you to read from it? Well, it depends what uh, it well, is and, and, how long it, and how long it lasts. All I know is that the, the public... Had uh, gave the uh, uh, NHS its uh, highest uh, positivity ratings uh, during the last Labour administration. I tell you why. You and, know why? Uh, um, they, you and know waiting, why. waiting, Jamie. waiting times were at their lowest, and um, tell you why. and outcomes tell you why. were just fine. Now, no, not no, no. so much. Okay, let me explain to you. My husband was a consultant cardiologist from eighty one until twenty sixteen when he got attacked by the surgeon for heart bypass grafting. Okay, he got um, what? Attacked, attacked by, a by a surgeon. Is that what you just said? Listen, I'm, I'm an ITU nurse, yeah. No, he, he had a bypass grafting, and so he had to stop working. Unfortunately, he was over 70. They were trying to, you know, you know Magdi Wax, Yakub, one of the best cardiac surgeons. No, I've got absolutely no idea what you're talking about. I, I sort of, I, I'm still trying to figure out that somebody got <laughs> attacked by a surgeon. No, that's, that's, that's all. That's just, the kind, that's just the way we used to laugh and joke before New Labour came in, in hospitals and theatres. I spent my life at ITU working with doctors and then surgeons and everything. Right, so, and now we're not allowed to mess around anymore because you must get... Um, well, well sp spe speaking as a potential patient, anyway. I'm, I approve of you not being able to muck around in the, the theatre. Oh, yes. I can absolutely assure you the standard is much lower now. But anyway, yes, they are. There. Yeah, at least we can agree. No, no, at least we can agree on that. They're much lower because, now. Because, yes, they're not. They're lower now because you not looked after just by nurses and trained nursing um, nurse aides, which we used to train before. Do, do, okay, they, never mind about all that. Are you saying no, that? No, the, when, hang on a minute. The NHS is worse now because of the Labour Party. Yeah, because of the change. So the for, for the, th th the thirteen no, no, years that we've just been yeah. through. It's all the fault of the Labour Party, who haven't been in power need, for 13 can, can years. I explain, no, 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 but I need to say, I, I have a book in front of me called 24 Hours to Save the yeah, NHS. Yeah, yeah, never, no, never mind yeah. about that. No, 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 ne that never mind about that. Are you telling me that the state yes. of the NHS is because, the, in 2023, is because of the Labour Party? I'll explain, if you, if you listen, I'll explain to you why, because it was very subtle. But if you, Nigel Cliff was the guy set in there by, by the Ellen Milburn, to, to bring in the changes they wanted to get. 
because to win 20, 2001 elections... So they the, had to so the Conservative Britain. Party, been, having been in power for 13 years, have been unable to effect a change no. in the NHS? Because they have to reverse all the contracts. It was the first thing Labour did was they changed all the doctors' contracts. So to change all the contracts... So um, GPs always used to... I don't know how old you are. GPs used to always... Have you see the same GP? He'd be on a call at night, um, and you just carry oh, on. Now. Yeah, uh, Labour uh, came in Elizabeth, and they took this, a, this is yeah. really anyway, dragging the show right down. I mean, well, talk true. about why a buzzkill. Why, why haven't we got out of our care anymore from the GP? Uh, I, it, it's, it's the, it, that, that it's Labour's fault deal. after 13 years of a Tory government is just such an asinine argument, uh, Elizabeth. I'm amazed that somebody of your obvious intelligence would uh, would make it out loud. No what, I, no, what I'm saying is we lived through this, OK? So any doctor that didn't um, comply... No, OK, go and look uh, up. Yeah, OK, all right, OK, all right. Anyway, uh, everything that is wrong with, wrong with the country is because of the Labour Party that hasn't been in power for 13 years. Let's just agree yeah, on yeah. that, because, I mean, okay. as, as daft as it may sound, you've convinced me. What else have you got? Good, well done. Look up Tony Blair's... No, n- I'm not going to do anything of the sort. What else? This is, no, this, is, this is not what you said you were going to call about. I put you on because you said you were going to call about something else. Instead of giving me some preposterous lesson about how the state of the nation is the fault of a party that hasn't been in power for 13 years. You've got to be kidding me, Elizabeth. Well, if I could see you later. No, you need to... If you could see me now. Darling, 1999 speech to the Labour Party... Are you still going on about that? This is not what you said you were going to talk about. No, but... He said, I'm going to destroy the working conservatism, starting with the British doctors. OK, all right. OK, Lo- lovely talking to you, uh, Elizabeth. Whatever, that, whatever the hell that was, I've got no idea. Thanks a lot, Jeremy Corbyn. Boo! You see what you've done? God. <laughs> uh, th- see, this is the, the, this mantle of victimhood. I mean, th- she seemed bright enough. I'm surprised. Everything is somebody else's fault. It doesn't matter how long they've been in power. It doesn't matter how, what kind of majority they have. You, you'd think that with an 80-seat majority, um, for, for instance, on the subject of Brexit, that with um, three, MP, three prime ministers in a row who, who, uh, who want Brexit to happen as their number one priority, and they're still not able to do it, what's holding them back? The Labour Party? Are you kidding me? It's this victimhood mentality. And this is what this woke argument is all about. And the immigrant argument is we want to help you, but the European Union won't let us. The European Court of Human Rights won't let us. Constant whining victimhood. That's what they're going to be fighting the next election on. And it works. People, th- people are casting around, why is my life not like those people that I follow on Instagram? Why haven't I got a boat? And the reason is, um, luck? No, can't blame luck, because what can you do about luck? Can't punch luck in the face. So, is it um, the Conservative Party? No, of course not. They're trying. It's these lefty lawyers that are preventing them from helping you. OK, well, who else is it then? Uh, I, an easily identifiable minority. There you go. Bingo. And that's what um, we're going to get for like another year. And there's all sorts of iterations of that. We, we've just heard one. Everything is um, a, the fault of the party that hasn't been in power for 13 years. And, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the Conservative Party's hands have been tied. They've been completely powerless, unable to act on any given issue because uh, the Labour Party were so sneaky as to completely tie them up. <laughs> so, such that they, they couldn't do uh, their best. We've got a, a year of this. God, it's excruciating, ain't it? Constant whining victimhood. If I were them, I'd actually do something positive rather than appealing to uh, people's sense of injustice. Because I would think that that wouldn't actually play for very long. Like people would get a bit 
wise to it, but I guess you only have to bring a certain percentage of the population along with you. And um, like uh, Donald Trump is fond of saying... I love the poorly educated. That's what they're aiming at. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Right, so what are we doing? Given we are doing a radio show, but it doesn't remind me that I do a podcast with Carol McGiffin. Oh, right, yeah. She is an absolute delight. And we try to solve people's problems on an hour-long podcast that comes out on a Monday. It's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? Oh, right, yeah. If you want us to have a bash at your issue, send it to the following address. Nick and Carol at global.com. N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com. And prepare yourself for total satisfaction. Yeah. (laughs) Ask for it by name on an internet near you. It's on Global Player. It's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? One of the three podcasts that I do. If you do a, an internet search on my name, Nick Abbott and Podcasts, then all three will come as though by magic. Oh. Richard emails, I, I couldn't work out who was smaller. Was it Sunak or Macron? Well, I've got detailed files about that. Did you read that thing about uh, body language in the mail? That's oh, some funny stuff. I'll get to that in a minute. Don't you worry about that. Uh, you will have to remind me, though. Let's have a call in, uh, let's see, Lewisham, Jane. Hello, Nick. Hello, Jane. I'll tell you what, in cold home Britain, it makes you want to go to Rwanda. I'll tell you something, I would be there now, but I've got family responsibility. Oh, yeah. I, that I can't pull out of. Family? Right. Well, well the, the family. Absolutely. That family. No, my family. Oh, so right. it's serious, you know, and I can't go yeah. to Rwanda right. at this moment unless we lined up Rwanda very, very well and me and the whole family go. I'm just checking the weather That's in... That's one uh, way out. Yeah, just checking the weather in, uh, in Rwanda. Well, it's raining tonight. This is the weather in Kigali in Rwanda. You ready? Yes. It's raining tonight and raining tomorrow and raining on Monday and raining on Tuesday and raining on Wednesday and raining on Thursday and raining on Friday and raining on Saturday and raining on Sunday and raining on Monday and raining on Tuesday and raining on Wednesday and raining on Thursday and raining on Friday. Wow. I, that's not what I would have expected. In fact, it's, there's a thunderstorm every single day. I've never seen that. That's a cloud with, a, with, a, with lightning coming out of it every day. Yes, that's good. That's well, it, it depends. It, it, like one of those, if it's one of those places where you could set your watch by it, and there's a thunderstorm for half an hour at three o'clock, and then it stops within thirty minutes, and then you get, get steam rising off the pavement, uh, and it just sort of washes away all the dirt and the filth. Well, that's okay. I, I quite like that. No, I tell you something, though, Nick. Mm. Right? No way should rich Rishi have given. The French more money. I've been watching all this since <laughs> 1991, right? I think I was the first one to see all this happening in Italy, right? And see what happening. It. He should this world crisis. Oh, yeah. That's what we've got to say. It's a world crisis. What's the nature of this crisis? Um, um, overpopulation. Oh, and bad management. You're, right, you're one of those. Overpopulation. So, OK, so how many people should um, should we have in this country? In this country, yeah, it's going to happen. Um, in England, not UK. Yeah, in, in England. England let's say... Uh, 15 million? 15 million 20, people, right. Well, we're going to have yeah. to kill a lot of people. Like, a no, lot. No, 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 yeah, no. Turn them into fertiliser. No, we <laughs> just education. Right, we're going to educate them to death. Right. Yeah. Um, you know what you, you know what you get with that. Is... You know what you get with that, Jane. Is you, you get um, you... A, a, a society that's almost entirely old people with nobody no. left to do the work no, and the caring. People... Yeah, you do. No, no, they. Yeah, that... you do. No, I'm not af- at all. I'm afraid you do completely. No, you. No, because the old people would have moved on. But this is moved this on. Is something that is going to happen We're gonna m- over about forty m- years. Right, and, and so right. in the Nature intervening period, going to make it happen. Uh, in the intervening period, if we try to engineer it, 
then we just get an a really old society. It's like yes, a society well, of old yeah, people, and nobody's years. nobody's doing the work anymore because everybody's too old. 40, yeah, but forty years. Yeah. The most of. So all we got to do is get through the next forty years, and everything's going to be great. Yes. Jane, we're not going to be around that long. <laughs> How old are you? We won't be old people. How old are you? Will we? No, we will. We'll have fallen off life's conveyor belt. Well, you will have. Yeah. Yes. How old? How old are you? I'm not telling you. You're fifty-three. I'm not. I'm not telling you. Sixty-eight years. You're I'm sixty-eight years old. You. No. No. You don't look a, a day over. No. Sixty. No. Anyway, Nick. If we've got to wait 40 years for things to get better, Jane, then um, then count me out. Anyway, the motoring party is going to sort all this. Is it? Okay, well, I'll I'll look up their website at my leisure. I'm not going to look up their website. But thanks for that, Jane. Thanks for that uh, very important uh, update. Bodmin, Malcolm. Nick, painful, my friend. (laughs) That's the second painful call in the last half an hour. Yeah, I know. Two, two in a row on the Nicky Abbott show. Yeah, yeah, you're making a habit of this, my friend. It's a Nick Abbott but habit. It's not you. It's 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 getting to people, Nick. Yeah. Nick, a couple of things, and the um, um, I'll come to the BBC in a moment, but I want to talk about Gary Lineker and our chief lawmaker, the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman. Yeah. And a private citizen using his own um, um, social media um, um, uh, access mm-hmm. on, on on a worldwide um, interweb thing, right, <laughs> has made a statement saying that I think our chief lawmaker should not be talking about um, unfortunate people. Um, in terms of them breaking in and invading, invading. us yeah. and being dangerous right. and being possibly killers. And that is what Gary Lineker is guilty of. Mm. That it's, is, essentially, that this, is this, government, this government was pulling a Donald Trump. And you remember when he said uh, no. they, the Mexicans, they send us uh, their worst people. They're not sending us their best people. They're sending us their worst people. They're murderers. They're rapists. And some are good people, I suppose. That's essentially what he said. And you, every single thing that this government does, see it through the lens of what would Donald Trump do? Well, let me... Let me take that analogy now of, of yours. I wrote a text in on the day it happened. I wrote a text in to a couple of hosts on LBC, and I offered them the opportunity to talk to me. Uh, and I said, <laughs> "Look, what I think is happening is," and, and one of said hosts um, compared it to um, Donald Trump on the wall. And I said, well, "Look, uh, um, Suella other has been slightly cleverer than that. She." Has not only said that what we what we need is a wall. She has mentioned people breaking in, right? Now you break into someone's house. How do you stop people breaking into your house? Well, you brick Bre- up the windows, yeah. you brick up the door, and mm-hmm. then they cannot break in. Not yeah. only have you then got walls, smart move. You ain't got no win- You've no. got no holes in right. your walls. There, yeah, yeah, you don't need windows. So, Who needs windows? Exactly. But uh, um, unfortunately, I wasn't taking that. So, Nick, for me, long story short, I I, I think it's. Lineker versus our chief lawmaker, and Lineker wins hands down. Well, I think now, that I think that the, the 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 relevant authorities, both at the BBC and the government, are, are somewhat taken aback by this because they imagined that this was a slam dunk. Yeah. I mean, you, you've got these uh, purple-faced buffoons of the Conservative Party common sense group, <laughs> which yeah. is just risible. Uh, just the title itself, never mind about looking at who is uh, involved. And they're insisting that Gary Lineker apologises and crawls across the carpet and licks our shoes at the very least, you know, words to that effect. And he ain't going to do that. They're just looking like a bunch of Muppets. Now, look, I'm just giving you a brief synopsis of the two main protagonists in this whole thing. That's unfair Gary to Lineker, Muppets, by the way. I apologise to Muppets. Li- you know, at least Muppets Lineker- were entertaining. Linda and Nick, our chief, uh, our, our chief sort of um, um, sweetheart at the moment, and 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 Braverman, our chief lawmaker. Mm. Let's go to the BBC, right? So the BBC and its its um, director general 
Um, in 24 hours, the director, the, the, the director general, has absolutely swivelled, and I think he is bricking it. But moreover, I think Rishi Sunak, who, who, who put out a statement earlier this morning, saying he hopes the matter is resolved very yeah, quickly. I bet I he does. Think, Nick, <laughs> I think. I think that Sunak has rumbled that. The BBC is being laid bare, and I think it's not going he, very well for the authorities. No, no. they, they thought that it, they he, thought that this was going to be a piece of cake. They were going to take down some uh, football numpty, and uh, it yeah. turns out that uh, it's like that t- Titanic and yeah. iceberg uh, analogy. That uh, Titanic boat certainly showed that iceberg a thing or two. Yeah, Ian Malcolm, I've got to go because look at the time. Sorry about that. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Text eight four eight five oh. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. your radio on global player and play lbc leading britain's conversation this is lbc this is lbc from global leading britain's conversation with nick abbott hello boys The whole world's gone crazy. Yes, the whole world has, in fact, gone crazy. (laughs) Leon texts, these muppets that keep whining and whinging about Lineker getting paid too much, don't they realise that if he has a pay cut, we don't get a cheaper TV licence? Also let them know that the TV licence is not a tax. Uh, And then, for emphasis, says Muppets again. I don't know, Muppets are getting a pretty bad uh, rap on this show. I apologise to Muppets. I am very sorry that I screwed up. Totally screwed. I mean, I am so sorry. You just don't know how sorry I am. I'm sorry. I'm very apologetic. Brighton. Hello, Ben. Oh, hi, Nick. Thanks so much for taking my call. Um, a, a, a couple of points if I may. Yeah? Um, I suppose the first one is that um, just now on the news report, there was some fella saying, you know, that... Um, People must, res- you know, BBC reporters must re- must remember their responsibilities to, yeah. to never like state their opinions. Or well, Alan Sugar did, did that all the time. All by the way, time. Um, yeah. he's always been slagging off the Labour Party. Mm-hmm. Um, also, Andrew um, I think Neil. Um, Andrew Neil worked for the yeah. BBC for a quarter of a century, didn't he? And mm-hmm. um, he never failed to state his opinions when he was either writing articles. I think, in fact, his magazine, The Spectator, um, contained an article praising the Waffen and SS. Um, <laughs> well, or the Verma. I don't know about that. I which, don't read is, that. I don't read that publication. Well, I, I, so I ran, let's just... your, I ran it past your producer, who right. seemed to remember it. Well, um, I, I don't. But, so um, let's forget that but, part, shall we? But uh, it, it was. It was. You know. But but. Um, uh, so so I don't think um, uh, Gary Lineker's doing anything particularly unusual. Also, by the way, I do remember Gary Lineker distinctly um, uh, slagging off the Labour Party when Jeremy Corbyn was in charge. Oh yeah. And he never got. He never got. Um, he tweeted about that, and he mm. never got he never got um, uh, reprimanded by the BBC. So right. that's all a bit weird. The other thing I'd like to say, in, in just in reference to to the, um, the the previous caller, I'm sure is an absolutely lovely woman. Right. Um, the world population <laughs> is actually declining, and it's been declining for some time now. There's a lot um, of ca- all. Uh, uh, so she's got nothing yeah, to worry about. No, exactly right. Yeah, but in it, fact, it we're just about might to reach it, a world population crisis. Crisis is exactly so right. Yeah, there, it's happening in Japan, and it's happening, I believe, in Italy, and it's um, shortly going to be in happening China here. China and Italy, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, in, in, people um, and, aren't uh, making enough babies. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, uh, so, yes, so um, I'm just a sort of consoler a little bit, you know. But, um, right. as I, I mean, I was listening to your show last night. Um, um, I was actually working last night, so it was kind of like I was, uh, I was on and off it, you know, because I was, I was trying to mind the door, and and obviously I could only listen to it through one ear thing, like my security thing mm. in the other ear. Um, but I thought it was, it was an amazing show, brilliant. I mean, you showed... 
unusual amounts of of, of grace and humour dealing with what <laughs> I genuinely think is one of the sickest things. No, I mean honestly, this is this is a really bad situation. If 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 this does garner the the, the, the Conservative Party any votes, it's this is not a country I want to live in any longer. I mean, well, forget what, about what I find the Labour Party. Yeah, what I find heartening, Ben, is that if it's a contest, hmm. Gary Lineker has won. Oh, gosh, that, no, that's, that's tremendously hot. I mean, does anybody... But, um, uh, let's I, have a I, show of hands. Who's in Suella Braveman's camp? Now, show of hands, who's in <laughs> Gary Lineker's camp? Well, that's overwhelming. Don't need to worry about a thing, Ben. Well, that's, uh, that's, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a huge relief to hear. Right. But uh, as I say, I mean, I, I just thought... You know, I, I do think as well the Labour Party um, uh, simply saying, well, it won't work. I mean, forget about whether it works or not. I couldn't care less whether it works. It's immoral. It's disgusting. It should not be happening. I yeah, mean, we it, don't. Say, I don't well, think it will you know, be happening. I think. I think the whole point of the of the plan is that it doesn't happen. That they will be able to constantly whine about it, or we would do it. But it's the evil European Court of Human Rights, and it's uh, this it's lefty lawyers, and it's activist judges, and it's constant, constant whining. That's what we're going to get for another year. That's all they've got left. They can't run on anything else but constant whining. Victim. No, they are a shocking bunch. They really <laughs> it's are. It's an absolute, absolute bunch of melts. shower. <laughs> absolute bunch of melts. All right. Thanks a lot, Ben. Melts. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it sounds like an ice cream. Mm. Anybody want ice cream? Anybody want ice cream? Say yes. Yes. Tom emails, my brother absolutely hates you speaking ill of Mog and the Tories and says you should be replaced by a pro-Tory presenter. I say keep up the good work, says Tom. <laughs> yeah, families. Here's the thing that Carol and me... Ca well, actually, uh, I came up with it. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't Carol, it was me. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, me. You see, me and Carol don't agree on anything. Particularly anything that has to do, anything to do with politics. And so very early on, I mean, we've done something like 150 episodes of our podcast. We do it every single week. And all the way through COVID, all of that. I don't think we missed barely a week in the last three odd years. And the only reason that we've been able to get through it is because right at the very beginning, I think this was my idea, I said, what we need is a safe space topic. We need a safe word. You choose a safe word and I'll choose a safe word. And when it starts straying into an area where we know we won't agree and it will get heated, we just yell out that word. And immediately we have to start talking about something else, a prearranged topic. And I actually st uh, invented a game. Last Christmas, somebody uh, texted in and said, oh, you know, I'm really dreading Christmas because the family's going to come round and it's, uh, you know, going to be my, uh, my r r racist uh, uncle and my, <laughs> my sexist brother and, you know, all of this. Stuff. And, they all, and, you know, half of us uh, want, are Brexiters and uh, the other half are Remainers and it's going to be an absolute nightmare all sitting around the table screaming at each other. And I said, well, here's a good idea. And it is a good idea. Everybody writes a topic, at least one, on a little piece of paper and you fold it up and you put it in a bowl. And you can have, uh, everybody chooses their own safe word or you just have one. And as soon as the conversation starts to get a little bit heated, somebody yells out the safe word and then whoever yells it picks a random topic out of the bowl, opens it up and you all have to start talking about that. How about that? And by that method... Harmony. So let's do a bit of that. And by the way, the uh, podcast that I do with Carol McGiffin is called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? Yeah. What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? If you wish to be amused and you've got an hour, it'll be right up your alley. Let's have a call in Embra. Hello, Andy. Hi there, Nick. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Um... My point is, um, thinking back like, over the last few months, there was like all the way to the discontent and the strikes going on. Mm. And um, every time at the dispatch box during Prime Minister's questions, Sunak always challenged Keir Starmer with the uh, union paymasters. He's been in the pockets of the union paymasters. <laughs> but, 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 no, but, but, nobody, but nobody questions who funds the Tories. 
and where they well, come from. I, I think they do. It's just that you won't read it in the newspapers because the newspapers are almost completely run by uh, offshore you're, you're, billionaire oligarchs. In the bag, mate. You've hit it right in the top bins there, haven't you? You smashed it in the goal. Dead on. But it's left to the left-wing loonies, so to speak. Mm. They can uh, maybe stand up and speak about it and they're shot down in flames. It's so we ridiculous. Can... Here, here's, the, here's how ridiculous it is. Being in the pocket of union barons means that your party is being paid for by millions of people giving a small amount each. Me, the myself, cons- I do that. The, yeah, the I Conservative that. Party... Hang on a minute. The Conservative Party, on the other hand, is completely reliable on a small handful of billionaires who give a vast amount of money. Now, think, which party would, would act in the interests of more people? Is it the party that is funded in small amounts by millions of people or the party that is funded by vast amounts by just a few people? Select. Got You've got it in one. You've got it in one. I'm a, I'm a union man. I, I think we spoke back in August. I was on the picket line in Edinburgh. Oh, yeah. striking. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in street cleansing. We're, we're under threat of privatisation now as well. So they're coming for us again because of the cuts to the local government budgets. They, they, they seem to think that the easy way out is privatising everything. Mm. Shrink, shrink, shrinking the state but on a local level. Well, that's, that's how to monetise uh, any business be, uh, by taking it from the people and giving it to one person. Exactly. A, a lot of people exactly. with a little money, that's no good to anybody. What they want is taking a, a lot of people's small amount and giving it to one person then you got a lot of then you got a lot of money yeah yeah i think we should i think we should conclude this call with uh, with a song how about now i'm a union man amazed at what i am i say what i think that the company stinks yes i'm a union man i'm a union man thanks andy oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three i should have um, asked him what he thinks about the new chook there's a new chooky embra it's um, that bloke that we f- forgot about. <laughs> Suddenly, uh, this guy uh, hosts interview, and you're like, "Which one are you again?" He's the new Chuki Embra. He's, he's got another uh, another title and a badge to go with it. Isn't that nice? West Devon. Hello, Rose. Oh, hello, Nick. Um, I approved of your advice to that young Ben. Um, to leave politics alone. It's, yeah. All this stuff is poison. It's it utter is. poison. It is poison. Now, you can take poison every now and again. You could have a, a couple of pints of poison at the weekends, just don't have it every day. No. Tell him to go out in nature while we've still got some. Yeah, that's and right. The, Flora and fauna. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, um, what was I going to say? The lawyer thing, the more they associate lawyers with bad <laughs> the easier it is for them to keep getting rid of laws everything yeah. is tricks mm. you talked about tricks it's the only way they know how to think is tricks and i and i um, i go back to my original uh, position at the start i think of the last hour i don't believe rishi sunak in this pretend role that he has adopted i don't believe that he is a person that thinks that there are lefty lawyers it just isn't convincing to me. It, that act no. doesn't suit him. I don't believe you, Rishi Sunak. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know what, whether it does or not. I just don't... You know, it, it seems to me that we've pretty nearly got a totalitarian state. I mean, we've got the state broadcaster feeling it has to mm. suppress the truth, yeah. free biodiversity... <laughs> at least keep it off prime time. I mean, that's the reason they've done it. Um, Saying that it was controversial. uh, Controversial to who? I mean, how right-wing do you have to be to object to saving the planet? It's full of facts. (laughs) I mean, woke. You know... uh, It's just incredible. That's where we are, that that you are woke if you are concerned about the place that you live? Well, exactly. But the point is, surely... That this shouldn't be possible. That the state, that our broadcaster should not feel so under the cosh that they've got to do something like that to well, the greatest broadcaster well, you, they have you ever had. That, you suggest that. You suggest that. No, I'm not sure about that. 
But you suggest that they're um, they're under the cosh. I, I would um, I would read it a different way that they're actually um, positively proactive. That they don't have to wait to the government to tell them what to do. They're doing it already. Yeah, but isn't isn't that because the government can get rid of um, what is it? They have to renew. Yeah, no, um, I, don't, I don't think they're fearful. The 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 chair. I can't remember the exact titles, but the chair well, yes, of the BBC of yeah. is um, yeah. a, a chap yeah. who is given hundreds of thousands of pounds of his own money to the Conservative Party. And the his second in command is um, a chap who used to be a Conservative Party councillor. I mean, it, it's not like they're, they're well, this is, yes, the government's course, fighting an I mean, uphill this... battle. They're there already. Yes, infiltration. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Infiltration uh, implies that they're doing it in uh, a subterfuge uh, a way, but there is no subterfuge. Oh, it's, it's, no, it's out in. Well, yeah, the, 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 this is the thing with this um, with this regime. They, they don't cover up anything. They they say the quiet part out loud all the time. It's exactly yes, like Donald Trump. Trump. Yes, 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 exactly. But I mean, what what happened with this whole? This whole thing, why the BBC has got involved, is the, the regime complains about being criticised, mm. about being told they're fascist. So it fascistically <laughs> complains. Well, you, mustn't, you mustn't actually complain to us yes. because, no, we're not fascist. Right. It's just that if you complain to us, you'll lose your job. Yeah, something, um, like, something then, like that. Yeah. So eventually the BBC gets rattled and toes the line, or your scenario, yeah, those guys are already in there. They're going to tow the line. Mm. Thus prompting many of the public to join in the, well, the, basically the battle against the BBC, yeah. albeit from the other side. Right. I'm scared okay. we're I, going to lose it. I, I, get, I get what you're saying now. It's, um, it's almost like a snooker. You, there's no way out. Um, it's, well, it's kind of like being trapped in the corner at, uh, in drafts. There's, uh, there's no way to, to move without getting taken. Yeah. So we're either against, well, how- the, against the government and... Um, mm, yeah, quite. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and on the side of the BBC, or uh, now, now my brain is frying. But but there's. I just want just to have the BBC. <laughs> you know, it's it's far too great a thing to lose, and I think we're going we're going to lose it as it is. I mean, I won't go on about this subject yet again. But mm. but today we heard about yet more cuts to BBC music. Right. You know, well, you've I, got I, this wealth. Yeah, I, I of, don't of, I, I don't know anything about that. Stuff on that but, side. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. And it's all, you know, it's all under threat. If the funding goes, the proms, everything. Mm. I can't bear it, Nick. I just can't bear it. <laughs> well, take heart from what's happened this week, Rose. The people have been asked and they have expressed a preference. We're on Gary Lineker's side, not the side of Suella Braveman or Rishi Sunak or any of these people who are wildly unpopular in this country. So keep that in mind. They are not winning. They are losing. And they're getting more and more desperate with every passing day because every passing day gets closer to the next general election and they can see disaster looming on the horizon. That's why they're freaking out. And they're still not winning. Rose, keep that in mind. All right. Well, some hope, I suppose, yes. (laughs) There you go. Thanks, Rose. 0345 6060 973. 84850 on the text. It's, um, I've said it around the wrong way and uh, um, now my brain isn't functioning properly. Call 0345 973 Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 what in places goes on inside that head of yours? Dan tweets, so if somebody working as a shelf stacker in a supermarket was to have tweeted what Gary Lineker tweeted about the government's policy on immigration and asylum, it would have brought that supermarket into disrepute and that supermarket would have been able to sack them. And there's a question mark. As it is a question. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe. It depends what their contract uh, says. Would a shelf stacker in a supermarket uh, bring that supermarket into disrepute? And would that supermarket then be able to sack them if they, re- if they tweeted what Gary Lineker tweeted about the government's policy on immigration? Well, um, I don't know. But if they had done, it wouldn't have been the most shocking thing about that supermarket. Have you seen the price of eggs? <laughs> Good grief. 
Those chickens must be living it up. Liverpool. Hello, Vincent. Hello, Nick. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, thanks. I'll tell you what, I'm gutted that woman won the car before. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, I've, I've bought some raffle tickets and she's cleared up. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I hope she's not driving off now. Uh, what I'm saying, Nick, at the end of the day, uh, Lineker, to me, he's always been a poor. Anyway, right, at the end of the day, he, he can say things, but the thing that matters, and no one says anything about this, is he said the Germans would do that. So I'm not Jewish. If I was a Jewish person, I'd be devastated with that comment, Nick. Yeah. And that's what, that's what to me, and no one's mentioned it, that's flabbergasting to me. 1.3 million, to be honest, uh, well, that's only two Nick a week, isn't it? To be honest, that, that the Germans do that is flabbergasting Right, so uh, are you... Well, no one's mentioned it. Are you saying that you're... I'm a little lost. <laughs> are you saying that you're, um, uh, you're, you're... You're sticking up for Germans now? No, I'm... I'm no, you can grasp it if you want, to be honest. I'll, I'll have another go with the car next year. Right, but the thing is, <laughs> is Gary... <laughs> I tell you what, it's not the RTR7, is it? Right, it's Gary Lineker saying the Germans would say... I sound like Sam Bowman. The Germans would say that. Right. Now, if I'm Jewish, I'd think, this is flabbergasting. This is flabbergasting to me, but no one's mentioned that. Right. Nick. I'm, I'm, I'm still not entirely sure what it is you're saying. I, I, I don't know whether well, you... I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, Nick. Yeah. Nick, it's, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, put it, I'll put it in layman's terms. Thank you. Gary Lineker said... Whatever he said, fair enough. Mm. Oh, no, it doesn't, it doesn't worry anything like that. He's, he's garbage. In. But the thing he said is if the asylum seekers were coming in, the Germans would have shot them all, basically. Well, he that's, said that, that's, no one's that, mentioned that. That is not what he said. Uh, and that's not what he implied either. He was very specific about what he said. And if you haven't read the tweet, then you should do, because it's very important if you're talking about this that you know what he precisely said. And the thing that he said was the language that was being used was, um, I can't remember what the word was, uh, was uh, redolent, perhaps, of the kind of language that was being used in uh, 1930s Germany. And that's just true. An invasion. I believe that the Germans uh, used that phrase. It's an invasion. So it's just factually accurate. He didn't go further than that. He didn't say that uh, Rishi Sunak is Hitler or, or that we're going down the road to the Holocaust or, or any of that stuff. What he said was factually accurate that they use the same terms. Um, thanks for that, mate. He's gone. 0345 6060 973. I was genuinely confused about what it was that he was trying to say because it, it started jokingly and I thought that the whole point was going to be at least they've written up on my screen about what he was going to say, was that um, he was going to... I assumed that it was going to... Well, you know, it's outrageous that Gary Lineker would uh, bring the Germans into this. What, you know, leave them alone. What have they done lately? But I, th I guess that wasn't where it was going. You live and learn. Luton, hello, John. Hi, hi, hi. Yeah, you, you got me thinking. You, um, remember that certain vote we had where there were 500 million Europeans about to invade yes. England? That, I'm just realising now that they're picking up on how the Brexit vote was won and what language was used. Mm. And they're using it again. Yeah. <laughs> Only much more brutally. Well, this is why um, they don't want Brexit to actually be resolved, ever because it yeah. gives them the excuse to keep whining that, oh, they're picking on us, the European Union. Why can't we have our freedom? Like that. E e exactly. The, the thing that really gets me, I know quite a lot of Iranians here, and I've got to say they are some of the nicest, most charming, and most people you, you want in this country. I mean, they're kind of engineers, they're professors, they've all escaped town. Yeah, teachers. I know an, an, an Iranian teacher extremely well, and uh, she couldn't be more delightful. Yeah. And, and you know what? They said to us, oh, we've read in the paper that um, there are two million jobs that your government's desperate to fill. Mm. So we've um, I tried to apply for them, but they said we're not allowed to work in the yeah. jobs that we can't find workers for. Right. And, it, and, I, and, I, and I look at me and they say, 
what is the matter with your government? We, we, I mean, we are good workers. We'd love to contribute. Mm. Um, but that would and, be a problem just, that they would have solved, which wouldn't give them the <laughs> the room to oh, whine God. about it. It's 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 constant <clears throat> whining victimhood. This is what we're going to get until the next general election. Oh, and why the, won't these lefty lawyers let us do what we want? And it's not just that. There's also, and you 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 hit on it spot on. What would Donald do? Yeah, yeah. Everything <laughs> is what Donald, would Donald Trump he, do? Yeah, what would he do? Because, I mean, Donald, Donald said, if I get in, I will lock her up. I'll lock up Hillary Clinton. <laughs> yes. And, and honestly, and what you're going to be getting is we will lock up. We will get them in on the boats, then we'll lock them up, and you can throw it all in your... <laughs> you know, I mean, it will, it will, it will go... <laughs> metaphorically speaking, yeah. Metaphorically speaking. Actually, it, the, it, have you seen the price of fruit? I, I, I would actually like that. Oh, man. Well, I'll well, tell you what, I had a crisis because the tomatoes disappeared from the shelf yeah. for about two weeks. Mm. There were none. Anyway, but no, I mean, I mean, um, I, I just, I'm, I beg us belief, but I used to vote Tory, but I know, so, I'll tell you what, um, I know that your your um, reception guy said don't don't go with the bookies, but I, I do think it's very <laughs> rare they get it wrong. And it's six to one on, just to encourage you, six to one on the Labour win their election. Right. right I, I have actually no idea what that means. So if I get... That, mean, that means you have to put six pounds on. Yeah. Give, give the bookie six pounds to win one pound. Oh, right. In other words, that, that's in a, other that's words, a no so, from me then. <laughs> in other words, it's very likely. But Conservatives, you, if you put two pounds on, they'll give you seven pounds back. It basically means... Mm. The Labour basically got it in the bag, unless they score an own goal spectacularly. Uh, which is what Labour tends to do. It's it's their speciality, fighting with each other and wrestling yes. each other to the ground while the Tories step nimbly over them and take the tape. Yeah, uh, We've oh. been there over and over and over again, John. Here, I've got to go, but thanks for that. 0345 6060 973, text 84850, email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. 12.30 on LBC, the news headlines with Tim Daly. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Anybody care what this guy thinks? No! I must tell you the uh, the story about the body language between uh, Fishy Sunak and uh, Emmanuel Macron. Because um, the uh, Daily Mail was all over this. Who do you think came out on top, so to speak? I'll get to that in a minute. Hey, was Heath? Hello, Troy. <laughs> An ecstasy Hello. of fumbling. Yes, sir. Um, thanks for having me on. Do you know what? I, I'm a little bit perplexed tonight. Mm-hmm. Switched on match of the day, as a lot of people would have done. And you know what? Ian Wright, Alan Shearer, all these guys, Jermaine Jenner, I'm so pleased they've stuck up for him. Right. Well, it would have been a bit obvious if they hadn't. I mean, I guess, I guess so. Yeah. But, you know, in this sort of day and age, at the end of the day, people have, have got to be politic- politically correct and, you know, everything's got to be spot on. You, you're fighting to make a mistake. And, mm. OK, I don't, I'm not saying he's made a mistake, but I'm just saying I just love that, you know, camaraderie and the, the fact that they've all, you know, yeah. supported him. And I just think that's, you know, that's what well, it should be about. I, I suppose they're, they're, very, they're very highly yeah. paid. But it is the workers standing as one. The workers, yes, exactly, exactly. And I, I hear you, and I think that is, he is, um, without being, uh, is this too much? He's a legend in, uh, yeah, Motson's died recently, and it's really, you know, awful. Yeah. But he is, he's going to be up there, at the end of his career, he's going to be up there with like the likes of uh, Frank Boff and, you know... Uh, well, he, he's, he's and, already up there as, a, as an actual footballer. I mean, he's the, the second oh, highest... God, yeah, 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 behind uh, Rooney. He yeah. was the, 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 well, I think it's behind Bobby Charlton. so many it? happy moments yeah. over, you know, God. I've never never got a card. 40... How, how can you go through a career in uh, top flight football and never get a card? That's impossible, um, yeah. you think. Absolutely amazing, and that that's a stat that I only found out after he basically finished yeah. his career. Right. And he's a gentleman. I, I, again, my cousin used to work for the BBC, and I'm not going to say anything like controversial here. She worked with Gary Lineker, did the Masters with him, and all she would say is, absolute gentleman, really lovely fellow. Right. And well, what I find heartening is that the public have been pers- trying that the the right wing 
offshore oligarch press have tried to persuade the public that Gary Lineker is the enemy, and they yep. haven't listened. They, they have read, not agreed. They haven't read the general consensus, have they? The, the, pap- the papers lose on this well, particular I mean, issue. What are we and talking about here? All of them. Are we talking we, about like the, the mail? The, yes. Uh, well, anyway, I shouldn't mail, anything. Telegraph, Sun, yeah, Express. All of them. The, the, the best-selling papers in the country. They're why, all, why, they're why, all why on. They're get, all on the. This guy and make his. And what's he done? I mean, crikey! I just, I just, I just find. In this day and age now, you've got to be so careful whatever you say. Yeah, we're, I, I have know. friends around today, and we're talking about certain words. You, you've <laughs> got to be really careful. I'm not going to say Don't them. Don't say Don't them. Don't worry. But you've just got to be so careful who you upset. I know. I'm, I'm getting a bit tired of it. Everybody's on the edge of their seat, desperate to, to draw attention to themselves, which I'm sure is what it is. In, and by doing that, they um, or by, by the method of taking offence... Even if it's even if they're taking offence on behalf of other people who aren't offended, they'll do that. And it's it's part of this me me me. It's an extension of taking pictures of yourself on your blooming phone. People don't use the for, the forward fa- facing camera, even though that's you know, uh, on my phone right now I got it looks like three cameras on the back of it. Now most people with this phone never use them. They only use the one that points back at them. Me, 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 me. And that's what this is. This taking offence, always on the edge of your seat, desperate to take offence, even if it's not about you. And I'm over it. We've got to leave that behind us. Come on, people. Get a sense of perspective. Troy, got to go. Chin up, mate. It might never have... Oh, no, that's right. It already has. Are you highlighting uh, that for my attention, yeah, or yeah. are you highlight- highlighting it to delete it? Lost you. <laughs> he couldn't hear what I was saying, so he, uh, he fumbled his headphones on and hit his head on the microphone. <laughs> well, it amused me. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Um, Thaxted, Joel. Hi, Nick. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Good. Um, right. Um, numerous points. I've, I've been waiting a long time, so I've been writing more and more stuff there. But just first, firstly, to pick up a point about the guy from Liverpool. I'm Jewish, OK? Um, what Gary Lineker tweeted, I totally agree with. The rhetoric used by this government is in line with what was used in the 1930s Germany. Which is not to say that anybody in the government is Hitler. That's, but that's, of no, course, where they no. went because that suits a- their argument of, uh, you know, Absolutely. constant whining victimhood. Absolutely. So, right, next point is, so being Jewish, I'm not offended by what he said. I, I, I think it's right. I think he's entitled to his opinions. Nothing to do with who he is, what he is. He is entitled to his bit. Freedom of speech, basically. Anyway, next bit, the emigration bit. Um, all these boat people coming over, everyone's saying, well, firstly, Fishy saying he wants to help the British people mm. and th- they come first. So if he's so worried about helping the British people, why, do- why doesn't he give them more pay rise? Why is he, <laughs> why is he, <laughs> why is he stopping <laughs> giving people pay rises in the yeah. first place if he's so entitled and right. helping them? And, yeah. and on the same side, the same people who, who moan about, oh, we should help our own, blah, 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 and they're the same people mm. who in the next sentence say um, these people going out on strike they should go back to work they they don't deserve it we're not getting a pay rise why should they get a pay rise exactly it it just doesn't make sense at all All right. next yeah not not fortunately all of the people that are espousing those opinions they don't think about what they're saying they just blurt it out it's like call and response it's like a blooming pantomime oh yes yes, it is you just said me it's all about me 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 it's not about anything else no uh, next point is about the boats as well. The, the government don't want to stop the boats. They want this to go on. This is their yeah, only I, I believe, hold on the population. I believe I've said that many times. Yeah, yes. yeah correct. And, yeah. and also, there is a simple... Sim- uh, oh, uh, sorry, as well. Everyone goes on about immigration. What about emigration? Mm. No one mentions emigration, how many people are leaving the country. Yeah, I mean, well, when, when Brits, we go Brits abroad, are, everywhere, everyone else is foreign. And we're still exactly. British, damn it. <laughs> yeah, and everyone should speak English. Yeah. Why should why should why should we learn their language? They exactly. Learn our yeah. language. Who the hell it's, do they think I mean, they are? 
I mean, how many people have actually left this country in the last decade compared to how many people have come? Well, I mean, it's it's a smaller number, but it's a significant one. Yeah, I don't know what the exactly. actual figure I mean, is. Brexit. How many Europeans went home because of Brexit? No one mentions that. Yeah, well, but they do the, sometimes. The people come in. Well, very, very seldom. It's all about immigration and being invaded and right. people well, coming they, for us. They mention it in relation to the million jobs that are currently being not done because the people that we screamed at to get out of our country got out of our country. Exactly, correct. Pretty unpatriotic so, I mean, of them, if you ask me. Yeah, I mean, there, there is a simple solution for, for, for immigrants, like people coming to this country. Is there? Instead of sticking them in hotels and... Well, yeah, exactly. If, instead of sticking them in hotels and paying £6 million a day to, to put them up in a hotel, a four- or five-star hotel, apparently, just give them a national insurance number, let them go out and work, and then they can pay tax. Yeah. I mean, Bingo. How, how easy is that? Well, it seems easy how to easy me, and it seems easy to you, but apparently uh, it yeah. doesn't seem easy to the government because that wouldn't give them the excuse to whine like victims. That's exactly. Keep that in mind. Whining, constant whining continuous whining. Whinging and whining and moaning. Just think, what would Donald Trump do? Wouldn't want to get anything fixed. He'd just want to complain about it to his fans. Joel, got to go. Thanks, mate. 0345 6060 973. Now, I don't have time to read all these texts and emails because there's 17 pages of them. But are these the funniest ones? Yes, it is. The funniest? The funniest. Right. Some of them are quite long. Are they really okay then? <sighs> Leave it with me. Uh, Vancouver. Hello, Nick. No, oh, hi, Nick. It, it, it's weird listening to this conversation over here in Canada, which is sort of like opposite land. Mm. So I've got my government here saying we need 300,000 migrants as quickly as possible because we need that to keep the economy growing, because yeah. nothing grows economies like bloody migrants. Right. And they're not even just saying doctors and lawyers. It's like, no, we just need bodies, warm working bodies under the age of 25. Well, it's interesting, that you, the yeah, it's interesting you say that, Nick, because while Rishi Sunak is saying we don't want no foreigners coming here, he is also making it easier for companies to employ foreigners. They're actually increasing the number of foreign workers who can come here while telling their fans that they're reducing the number of foreigners that can come here. I mean, talk about a card trick. You wouldn't leave your dog with these people to, to take it for a walk. Well, the other interesting thing is, as I've said before, I'm a foster parent. If you're a foster parent in Britain, you might want to close your ears right now because you're not going to like this. There have been difficulties in recruiting foster parents in sort of British Columbia, Vancouver. House prices are really expensive here. And if you're a foster parent, you need a four or five bedroom house. So I was just given, without even asking, like all foster parents, a 35 to 40% pay increase. The government just said, oh, we need to recruit these people. How are we going to do that? Pay them more money. Wow. So my pay has gone from about 6,000 quid a month to north of 8,500 quid a month without me even asking, because that's what it takes to recruit. Like I said, it's, it's like opposite world here. Well, it, it <laughs> no sounds, it sounds like... I should be taken on the chin for the good of the country. Yeah, it's, 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 no. it's two sides of uh, the, uh, the, the, the carrot and the stick thing. Sounds like you've got the carrot and we just get the stick. Yeah. All, All right. right. Thanks a lot, Nick. Thanks for the bad news. Bad news from 3,000 miles away. Shane Tex, flying home from a country that makes wheels of cheese, that makes wheels of cheese, and the airline has three consecutive letters in its name. Laughing at last night's show, I received several stern looks and scowls. I gave them your number. P.S. Lots of white, fluffy stuff here in Yorkshire. Been away for a few days. Has anything happened? So let me just uh, confirm that these are the funniest texts. No, check the top of the Google Doc. <laughs> <laughs> don't threaten me. <laughs> well, I see. he says these aren't necessarily the funniest, but they are the daftest. Uh, right. But I don't want daft. I want funny. I mean, can't, can't you give me funny? Put the funniest at the bottom and I'll get to that last. All right. Getting absolutely no help here whatsoever. <laughs> Um, and I must do this, um, the body language thing. 
Remind me. 0345 6060973. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060973. Text 84850. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. Come on, we're running light. 0345 6060973. Belfast. Brendan. Ah, thank you very much for uh, letting me speak to you. Um, this is about you, actually, and it's... Uh, and, uh, it's, it's, it's don't give me the, uh, oh, no, not me. It's, uh, I'd like to nitpick with you. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say... Well, now I'm going to get sent two or three things. Oh, by the way, if, if just before you you dump me, would you let me recommend a film at the very end? So it, a one-sentence recommendation of a film? <laughs> yeah, the, Okay. Okay, thanks. The first thing I was going to say was you recommended. Uh, oh, see the Gary Lineker and all the political shenanigans that are going on at the minute. It's so toxic that it's head head melting. So I've, I've tried to stay. <laughs> I just I, I, I tried to ignore it. Yeah, you know. And the your famous seven words are about the size of it all of the whole strategy. What would Donald Trump do? Yeah, what would Donald you Trump know? do? Always. Yeah. Always yeah. think whatever the Conservative Party do is explainable by thinking, what would Donald Tr- Trump do? He would do the craziest thing in any given situation. Is he crazy or is that just the way he acts? It's just yeah. the way he's crazy. Well, I always remind myself of those seven prophetic words, what would Donald Trump do? Mm. But now, moving on, and this is a but, and it's a B U double T but yeah. cigarette but I was I wanted to talk about smoking and this is because of you <gasps> you you started me smoking again what uh, yeah I had been stopped smoking for quite some time and had actually stopped coughing and uh, found it easier to get up in the morning and everything else yeah and then but but because I hang on your every word uh, you recommend that a few months ago. A show. I'll not name the the provider, but it was the Crown, <clears throat> Netflix. <laughs> yeah. There's no need for rudeness. It's on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, the Crown. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've always been very interested in the British royal family, and so I watched it right up until Diana appeared, and then I didn't want to watch anymore because right. I, I was a big Diana fan yeah. and didn't want my. Um, Prices of her to be ruined yeah. by some producer somewhere, mm-hmm. but the, up until that point, I thought the the history of the royal family it was it was intoxicating, and you were right. It's it was a very brilliant. very good show. Yeah, I haven't got yeah. anywhere near the Diana part yet. I've, I, no. I've just got up to where Olivia Coleman is the queen. I've, I haven't oh, got past that yet. It was well. I listen. To, I binged on it, and I don't even watch TV. But one late night after you had mentioned it, I yeah. said it. Okay, I didn't even have a sus- subscription. The Netflix. So I subscribed and watched it. Right. And in every scene, well, not every scene, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but, you know, every two minutes mm. or three minutes, uh, the king or whether they were celebrating, whether they were under stress, whether they were at a funeral, or, uh, whether they were at a wedding or whatever, everybody was lighting up cigarettes and making it look sexy. <laughs> and... <laughs> it's like subliminal advertising. Yeah. So I thought. So I sort of thought here. Whoa! They wouldn't make a program like that where uh, you're injecting heroin <laughs> and everybody was having a party and you know, a great time. And, yes. You know. So then we're having a I party. Thought, yeah. Yes. So then I thought, okay, and after it was that, as I say, I wouldn't watch it after the Diana mm. where she appears, because I, I, I remember that happening on CNN. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, it's, and, a bit, it's a bit that. weird catching up with your own um, experience. I, yeah, I get for, it. That's it, that's it, yeah. So, uh, I thought, well, I wonder, is there anything else I would watch? And I don't know where it came from. It wasn't even on Netflix. It was on uh, my uh, TV license channel, BBC, mm. on iPlayer. And I watched this programme because, again, from the history, I remember it very well. And I remember in equal measure being horrified and actually saluting yeah. the Brinks, the Brinks Matt Joe. Oh, right. I haven't I haven't started that yet. But they smoke on that too, do they? The gold? Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I don't get it. See, if I was an actor and the script called me called for me to smoke, I would say, well, how is this helping the story? Why do I have to exactly. go through this poison? Write it, just score it out of the script. I'm not doing it, I would well, say. And the gold, which well, again, I, I can recommend, though, in the first three episodes, I binged on it. I, I don't mm. know how this is. I never watch TV, but I watched the first episode. There's a bit... I mean, there's no way that the BBC could throw the amount of money at a drama. Yeah, it must be like a, a, a co-production with some American yeah, company. Yeah, they don't yeah. have the Netflix budget. Right, you know? yeah. But it's still, for the budget that they had, I have to say, right. and the BBC stuff, okay. it's brilliant. All it's right, now, what's, what's this film that you were talking about in closing? Uh, could I just say, I don't want you to think that this is the kind of film I enjoy, yeah, or just, though just, I loved it. Just say it. But, I have never watched a film like this in my life. I was actually looking for The Devil's Advocate, which was with Keanu Reeves as a Deep South lawyer. Have you yeah, seen that one? I uh, don't think so. Oh, that's a great show. Okay. And I was taping in uh, Devil's Advocate, Al Pacino and Keanu Reeves. Right, right, and, right. Uh, yeah. So what's this and film? And what came up was you love b- uh, bombs and explosions yes. and all this kind of stuff. Get on with it. it. Which is it? The, the Devil's Rejects. The, dev- <laughs> the Devil's Rejects. It, I'll look it. it up at my leisure, Brendan. Leave it with me. Thanks a lot, mate. I was watching um, uh, Once Upon a Time in America. It must be the, like the fourth or fifth time. It, it gets better every time I see it. It's a Quentin Tarantino film. And everybody in that is smoking all the time as well. And uh, it, it's just painful for me to watch them do it. But I guess they you can tell which actor has been smoking, is a smoker, because, uh, you, you know, they, they, the, the amount of uh, smoke that they draw in before they blow it out. But it made, uh, it made me feel like I was getting lung cancer just watching it. I would say no if I was an actor. You know, if I had the power, if I was Brad Pitt or uh, um, what's his name, I'd just say, no thanks, write that part out. I must just tell you about this body language thing, because Fishy Sunak meant, uh, uh, met uh, Emmanuel Macron, French president. Uh, Sunak committed to sending uh, Paris £478 million and we get pretty much nothing in return, you know, as a part of our freedom and sovereignty. Um, The two sides have not discussed a returns agreement. We could, of course, return people when we were a part of the EU, but uh, Boris Johnson's excellent deal meant that we couldn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So it's us against the might of the European Union. And uh, and the two leaders uh, met... You know, and uh, and how did that to work out uh, last time that it was us against the might of the European Union? Oh, fabulous! Yeah, pretty poorly. Uh, bumbling Mr. Blobby came back, and that melting candle David Frost signed that uh, fantastic deal, and then continued to whine about it from the moment that they signed it. But body language expert Judy analysed their behaviour and revealed that of the two, Rishi Sunak is submissive. <laughs> Of course he is. That's our new role in the world. Submission. We had our bottoms handed to us by Australia. Hell, we were rinsed by New Zealand on that deal that we were so desperate to sign that our own failing farming community said it was a catastrophe for British farming. And the New Zealand has actually made it into a news bulletin that they couldn't believe we gave them so much and got practically nothing in return. (laughs) <laughs> There's actually a news story about what a terrible deal it was for Britain and what a great deal New Zealand have got. That clips on the World Wide Wait. Body language expert Judy said, despite the mirrored bonhomie between Fishy Sunak and Emmanuel Macron, she said these subliminal messages place Macron in charge in terms of status and control as he greets Sunak. She says their rapport is illustrated with at least three rituals of support and agreement. Their greeting involves a power hug with mutual backslapping and a display of matching machismo. Well, (laughs) he was going to lose that, wouldn't he? Machismo, fishy sunak. This government. That bloke, macho, macho like the village people. And that's it. Now, uh, the podcast tonight is, um, I, don't, I don't know what's going on with it, uh, really. It's, uh, it's on Apple Podcasts, last night's show. We are having difficulty getting it up on Global Player. Don't ask me why, but that's the facts, Jack. But 
If uh, you um, want other shows, then uh, they are available on Global Player. You can find all of LBC's shows to catch up on there, as well as the best video clips from LBC and other global stations. And you can get Global Player for free from your app store or globalplayer.com. I'm going to be back at tonight at 10 o'clock. Coming up at four, Ali Mirage. First, Clyde Ball. 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 First, 